reborn in MHA as Denki Kaminari, an O system or cheats. The only thing he has going on for him is his own ambition. Will he fly or walk? Will he be just another side character? He will never accept something like that. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This your boy, Omni-sensei. Welcome to What If I Was Reborn as Denki Kaminari, God of Electricity, Part 1. Hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story. Link in the description. Without further ado, let's get into it. Happy birthday, Kaminari Chan. I look around me. There are some family members. It feels surreal that I have been here for four years. In a world I thought to be fictional. I died by electricity and was reborn as a character who will have the quirk to produce electricity. Well anyway, ever since I understood that I was in my hero academia world, I had already started preparing for the future. And I got to say, I have been trying different methods of training from the internet. And I got to say they are pretty effective. I can confirm that I am the strongest kid in the neighborhood, even against some who have strength augmenting quirks. I can defeat them with technique. Well, technique is a strong word, more like just electrocuting them. I am definitely not going easy on the brats. I don't want to be defeated by them. As middle school comes around, I am happy. I have a lot of fun in school now. It is super easy for me the second time around. So I dedicate most of my time to training for the future. I am currently doing so in the school gym. I also have my only friend that I made in this world sitting on my back while I do push-ups. She is just chilling and reading a manga. I didn't really try to make more friends because as a certain King Explosion murder would say, they are all side characters. And the girl who is sitting on top of me is Mina Ashido. Hey! Denki, Chan, why do you train so hard? I keep doing push-ups while answering her. Because I want to become a hero, I answer her without missing a beat. Well, a hero can entail a lot of things, but it sounds better if I say it with some enthusiasm. Eh, when we become heroes together we will have a lot of fun. Wines Mina. Usually this would be annoying, but I have gotten used to her now after putting up with her for so much. Of course we will, Mina Chan. I answered her once again without missing a single beat. Later on, Mina went home, and I am currently tired from exercising my body, training my quirk, and practicing martial arts. So I decided to rest by reading a medical book on quirks and quirk theories. It was written by Darumo Jiko when he was young. It says so on the cover. And I know that guy knows about quirks. I look at the setting sun and think that it is time to go home now, as it's getting late. Also, I need to buy that new book on acupuncture. That way I can release the stress that is building up in my body. Hopefully it's not another sham book. Years pass by, and I am currently 14 and on the roof of the school. There is this girl with orange hair on here. I got a love letter from her this morning to meet her here after school. I mean sure I act like I am nice to everyone in school and have gotten a nice reputation from it. But in reality I don't even remember most of my classmates names except Mina, who will be my classmate even in UA. So she isn't necessarily a side character like the girl currently in front of me. Hey Denki, Kun. W, will why you go out with me? Hmm, how to reject her nicely. After all, I don't want her to become a villain and come after me. That would be dangerous and kind of cliche. I nervously scratched my neck, acted nervously, and bowed to my waist in front of her. W, well, honestly I am flattered, but I can't date someone currently. Because I am going to become a hero in the future. So I can't date you knowing full well that you will be in danger. I tell her with a resolute voice. I am truly sorry. I, I understand. Meekly says. The girl with tears in her eyes and starts running away. Well, this was such a drag. I even had my quirk ready to activate just in case she became ready to kill me. I mean, people these days are way too crazy to trust. I have trained a lot during my new life. But I never want to fight against someone I don't know the quirk of. Furthermore, I mean if someone has a quirk like Aizawa's then I am in trouble, 
That guy is like the counter to almost all quirks, even all for one and one for all. Not only that, but I contemplate these thoughts in my head for half an hour. Thinking about a hypothetical scenario where I fight Aizawa. As I think that, I pack my bag, change clothes and go outside of the school gym. As I go outside of the school, I see the police with a crying Mina. Huh? Did something happen? I hope it's nothing that will change canon. I hope I didn't create so many butterflies that it became an unrecognizable timeline. As I go there, I look towards Mina with an evidently worried face. Hey, Min Dash, excuse me, are you Denki Kaminari? Calls out one of the police officers. He has cat ears and a cat tail. Uh, what is he on about? I am curious about what he wants, but I still answer him. Yes, I am. Well, I need you to stay calm, but something tragic has happened to your parents. Says the policeman with a cringing look on his face. Uncomfortable about what he is about to tell me next. One month passes, and I remember that day so clearly. The day my parents in this world died. It was kind of sad. I had been with them for 14 years. I mean, it was like a cousin dying. Sad, but not shocking enough to change anything. I was also kind of prepared for them to die. After all, they were the most affected by me taking over Kaminari Denki's body and soul. And the villains kill people, so that is that. I mean, I am the opposite of Canon Kaminari. I have top grades and popular, am very good with my quirk and hardworking. All they needed was a wrong turn in the street for them to be killed. Just that small of a butterfly for them to die. I am glad that the government let me live by myself for the moment, with the neighbors occasionally coming to check up on me, and one of my uncles too. Just telling them that I want to stay here because I plan to go to you. A is enough to please them. Honestly, no wonder people like Shigaraki exist. The public idolizes the heroes too much. I can have that work in my favor. Then suddenly, as I am walking towards my home, I see a giant monster-looking man cornering and threatening two girls. He seems about four times the size of a normal man and he is wearing a cloak. Where is the Springer Hero Agency? Says the monster with a harsh voice while looking down at the girls. The girls are too scared to even talk straight sentences. The monster seemed to be getting impatient, that is Gigantomachia. A monster in his own right. Can I defeat him as I am right now? No. Can I win in a 1v1 fight against him? No. Can I kill him? Yes. The creature growls at the girls. You are not going to tell me. Crack the building which he put his hand on cracked. Well, then time to step up and act like a hero. I let my school bag down and run in front of the girls facing the thing. I got to admit though this thing is really intimidating. I know I can easily outrun it so that calms me down a lot. I then point to the side and with a smile on my face tell him. Turn at that corner and then make a left at the big street. The creature just smiles and then says, Thank you. He leaves. Well, that was anticlimactic. Thank you so much, Denki Kun. That was so scary. The two girls start hugging me while crying. Well, stop crying then, you stupid bitches. You are making my eardrums bleed. But even with my negative thoughts, I just turn towards them and smile charmingly while softly saying to them, No problem. After all, even if I wanted, I can't ignore two beautiful ladies like yourself. They immediately blushed. Wait. It can't be this easy to make a girl blush. Man, young people these days, after helping them get up, and they are not panicking anymore, I just turn around and start walking. Anyway, see you at school. After the incident yesterday, my life is returning to normal. I need to train some more. I only have one year until Udata starts and all of the canon shenanigans begin. By then I must be strong enough to survive. I can't count in a mid-battle power-up. I arrive at the school locker, and I am changing my shoes, Japanese schools are so weird. Then I sense Mina come towards me with my electricity sense, which senses the electrical waves of something's or someone's brain. I have been friends with Mina for so long that I even know her brainwave signal. She comes close and puts her arm behind my neck and says, Hey! I heard from Sheena, Chan, and Kila, Chan, that you helped them yesterday. Wait, who even are Sheena and Kila? Oh, she must be talking about the girls that I helped yesterday. Well, it was nothing big. After all, I want to become a hero, and my body kind of moved on its own, 
That last part was a lie because if there was real danger my first instinct would obviously be to run away. But Mina still believes it, and she smiles even more wildly. Wow, if you say something like that, it makes you sound already like a real hero. Also, did you know that Kirishima was at the scene when you did your heroic cool stuff? He even apologized to those girls because even though he was there he was too scared to help. Wait, did she just say Kirishima? I have to make up for my mistake immediately. Oh, I remember now. In the anime, Kirishima's backstory. Hmm. Okay, I need to calmly think about this and how to fix the situation. If he didn't see that Crimson Riot recording again, he might give up becoming a hero. That is unacceptable. That will set back my plan so much and there will be many unforeseen events. Nothing scares me more than things not going within my general plan. I must be calm in this, though, and my mind must be calm on this. I wait till after school to put my plan into action. Well, I was gonna search for Kirishima, but instead, he found me. He looks at me with a slightly nervous look, and he seems in low spirits. Hey, Kaminari, can we talk on the rooftop about something? Well, the only reason that I have ever gone on the rooftop of this school is to get a confession. I hope this is not like that. Even though the chances of it being that is unlikely, I still have to prepare for a rejection speech. After all, it never hurts to be prepared. Also, I am into hot, well-developed girls. And he really looks very different from the anime, he even has black hair. That is the reason why I never noticed him, and I wasn't really looking for him either, though. So there is that too. We just got to the rooftop in complete silence. This is awkward. Well, I guess I better break the ice. I make a smile on my face and calmly say to Kirishima. So, what did you call me here for, Kirishima? He looks at me seriously and starts explaining. I also want to become a hero. So tell me how were you able to go out in front of that guy without fear and a smile when I couldn't even move? Okay, I already had a speech planned in a scenario like this. I just look at his eyes and clench my hand into a fist just to add to the atmosphere. And say with furrowed eyebrows and serious voice. You know, Kaminari? At that moment, I just smile to release the pressure of the girls and to trick the fear inside of me. His eyes widen, and he says, Ijiro Kirishima POV. That is shocking, to say the least. Even he was scared. He is really popular in school as the guy who will definitely become a pro hero. Then Denki Kaminari just smiles awkwardly and adds, Yeah, I guess that is not as amazing as it seemed, huh? You are wrong, Kaminari. That is even more amazing, to be able to stand and run ahead in front of your fear like that, as I think that, I look at my hand. How do I even compare to someone like that? Maybe I really am not hero material. I look at the guy who checks every point perfectly to become a hero. Well, what if I ask him? Tell me, Denki. Do you really think I could be a hero? I was too scared to even move. I don't think I can be a hero. Even my quirk only lets me harden my body a little. It's not flashy or anything like that. God damn it, I am about to cry. This is not at all manly. You know Kirishima? A hero to me is not someone who is flashy or has a cool and strong quirk. A hero to me is someone who will risk his life to turn his promises into reality. As if a lightning bolt hit me, I come to a realization. He is right. I also can become a hero. Then a weird overwhelming aura around Denki Kaminari, his eyes are shadowed, and he extends his hand towards me and smiles brilliantly. This, this... So, Ijiro Kirishima, will you promise me that you will become a hero with me? He is right. I will become a hero. I then shake his hand. Yes. I promise and swear on my name that I, Ijiro Kirishima, will become a hero. I don't know where this road will take me. But I will definitely keep walking in it until I reach my destination. One year has passed since the conversation with Kirishima. In one week, the U.A entrance exam will come. I look at Kirishima in front of me, he has hardened all his body. Ever since we decided to train together, we have been sparring in my backyard like this quite often. Hiya. He yells out a war cry, coming towards me. Well then time for some fun. I coat my right arm in a little electric current as he gets close I run towards him, he punches towards me. I dodge under his punch. I hold his elbow with my left palm and I swipe with my right arm at his neck. Bomb! And Kirishima is knocked down on the ground. 
Cough, cough. Why do you always cough? Hit the spots where it hurts. I go towards him and touch his throat with my finger to suck out the electricity that is resident in his body and that it is shocking him. Then I just smile slightly and say, Well, obviously, if I was an enemy, I would hit your weak points. But with your quirk, all of your weak points are getting harder to break because every time I find one the next time that point's defense becomes harder. I offer my hand to him to get up. He takes it and gets up. Then, with a little pride, he says, Yeah, I remember in the beginning you didn't even need your quirk to defeat me. I just smile at him. He doesn't know. But if I wanted, I could still beat him without using my quirk. I mean, I just hold him down in a wrestling move and use his quirk against him by breaking all of his joints against each other. But I won't tell him that because that would lower his self-esteem. Well, you have gotten better. I can't deny that. Also, has Mina told you anything if she wants to join us for training today? I ask him. He takes a towel. We start going inside my house now. We train here most of the time because of my spacious yard. And we don't have any interruptions here. No, she didn't. Also, I have been thinking about a special move for myself. I look at him with a curious gaze. Hmm, is it the same as canon or is it something new? I wonder. We sit on some chairs on the yard pavement. Really now? If it's a special move, you have to name it. Plus, it will have to be catchy with your hero name too. Well, I am thinking of calling it Red Riot Unbreakable. It will be my special hero move. It should harden my body to the max and be pretty strong. Well, not as strong as your super move, but still it is at least something right. Explains Kirishima with a thoughtful look on his face. So the same as canon but earlier, well he probably has to learn this first before learning anything more advanced. I then get up and go get some water from the fridge and tell him. Hmm, that is quite cool sounding and catchy too. One week passes and I smile as I see the U dot a building in front of me. I, Mina and Kirishima are walking towards U dot a together. So you were thinking of dyeing your hair. That would look super weird and macho. As always, Mina says stuff in a joking way that might be an insult. Or not. I smirk a little and say to her in a calm, reassuring voice. Well, if he wants to, he should. After all, it would be like him starting his journey towards becoming a hero. They look at me surprised. I just shrug my shoulders and smile at them. Or something like that, I guess. After finishing the written exam and physical check, I am now listening to the explanation by present Mike Deku also does the murmuring the same as canon and then Ida reprimands him. Again like in canon. It seems like nothing has changed from canon, at least not yet. Now we are on the test grounds, damn. How does Yudate even get the budget for robots plus the buildings? And the exam also seems to be the same as canon? Begin. Shouts President Mike. As soon as he says that, I move electricity through my body. I can feel electricity run through my body and a slight tingling feeling pass through my spine. My hair stands up and I am surrounded by electricity. Fwash! I immediately started disabling the robots and using my electricity, I easily fry their circuits. As I am counting I reach the 70 mark point I look at my electric resistant watch. Damn these robots are hard to find. Hmm? Three minutes and I still have most of my charge left. Damn, I'm going to need to charge some electricity. My body by just moving creates electricity, or I can get it from an outside source. I can hold my speed of lighting transformation for up to around a dozen hours. Sure, that seems a lot, but that isn't counting the times I might need to shoot off lightning as an attack or such other things. I hope you dot A will be able to help me with that. Even as I have developed ways to recharge, such as with my movements. Also, I hope they can help me find a way to help create a rail gun. I haven't been able to create one for myself. Anyway, I go saving people all around the field. This time I don't outright just short circuit the robots. I just press their off switch when someone is about to be hurt and that is that. Well, I definitely passed the written exam. I am sure I did get more than 90% and the practical exam is a given. I guess all that is to lift is to just wait for the results. Teacher's POV. The white rat-like creature wearing a suit looks at the monitors displaying different cameras through the testing zones. There were also some drone shots. His quirk is a high spec, so he looks through all the screens and his mind works at crazy speeds, analyzing and calculating different scenarios playing through different fields. While All Might was looking at Midoriya, the teachers like Midnight, Eraserhead, 
and all of the other teachers and even the other staff members were concentrated on the lighting boy. Yankee Kaminari, one camera would catch him for a split second, and next, he would disappear in a yellow flash. Can someone give me this kid's file? Asks Nizu with a smile on his face. Or at least what seems like a smile by human standards. Midnight then goes to a table and with all of the files on it, she takes one with the photo of Denki Kaminari stapled on it. When she gives the files to Nizu, he opens them and quickly reads through them. Hmm. So what does it say? Asks Vlad King. Nizu just looks at Vlad and with a surprisingly light, disturbed voice says, well, the kid is Denki Kaminari, and he has a quirk called electrification. It gives Kaminari Kuin the ability to charge in electricity and emit it out of his body as a sort of protective aura that electrocutes anyone through contact. Denki Kaminari was born to two seemingly normal parents. A father who worked in an office and his mother was a housewife. They both died in a villain attack. Seems like Kaminari, Kuin always wanted to be a hero, but after his parents' death, even more so after his parents' death, he asked for independence to live alone with only the supervision of his neighbors. The others are perturbed by this a little, normally kids aren't allowed to live alone. Except for the ones with high-risk quirks. Nizu can immediately discern the situation and see that Kaminari was most likely telling an alternate reality. Lying. To the child services that his quirk releases lightning at random intervals which hurts those around him. It seems like he is determined to become a hero, says Midnight. She too assumed the same thing as Nizu. It isn't necessarily rare for children to tell a lie like that, but most children aren't skillful at lying like young Kaminari seems to be. Nizu just shakes his head and says, But the most disturbing thing is that even though his quirk gives him a certain immunity to electricity, the way that he is internally using it, even if it does not critically hurt him, he must feel a massive amount of pain. After all, from his moves, he is shocking his systems and organs to work beyond their limits. A reckless move of someone who doesn't seem to care for his life. When he comes here, no matter what, we must stop him from overly using that move. All of the teachers nod, not understanding that Kaminari's quirk is classified as electricity generation. He never mentioned that it also makes him resistant to electricity. He left that part out by mistake. It also seems like the kid will set a new record, says Aizawa as he looks at the scoring record. All the others look at the scoreboard, and they are all a little shocked at Kaminari's score. 165 villain points, 99 rescue points. Well, that is a new record, concludes Nizu. Denki Kaminari, MC, POV. After exiting the UA high school together with Kirishima and Mina when we are outside, Kirishima smiles at me and says, How did you do, Denki? I bet you got a high score. Hiroshima has a confident look on his face, so he must have done quite well. Ayaha! Screams Mina in panic. I don't know if I will even pass. I defeated so few robots that it isn't even funny. I just smile at her and pat her head and reassure her. Don't worry about it, Mina. I am sure that you passed the exam. Then when I do so she just looks at me and blushes a little and tries to hide it by swinging her arms around and saying with frustration, A Denki stop treating me like a kid. We are not young anymore. I just keep smiling and keep petting her head again. There, there, no need to be sad now. Kirishima laughs out loud while Mina just pouts and, in a quiet voice, she says, Baka Denki. Takes one week for the U dot a letter to arrive for me. So I settle down on the comfy chair in my room and look at it in front of me. I open it and a hologram of All Might appears in front of me. I am here as a projection. Yells out All Might, startling me for a split second. What the hell? Why does he have such a loud introduction even while in a projection? I actually came to this town to work at you. A. Announces All Might. I already know this from my first life so I am not shocked. You passed your written exam with flying colors, and you also passed the practical exam, says All Might once more speaking way too loudly. Is he stopping like that just to be dramatic and raise tension? I already know that I passed, but I do study his behavior a little. After all, I must learn how to act like a real hero and All Might has that down to a notch. You also got the highest score ever recorded at Udata. You got 165 villain points, but that is not all. A hero is someone who helps people so you also got 99 rescue points, 
Congratulations, Yoon Denki, you passed your entrance exam. Then he shows me the list of the top 10. Name VP RP rank, Denki Kaminari, 165.99 first, Aijiro Kirishima 4042nd, Katsuki Bakugo 7703rd, Achiko Yurarika 2845 4th, Ibra Shiyazaki 3632 5th, Itsuka Kendo 2546th, Tenya Ida 5297th, Izuku Midoriya 068th, Tetsutetsu 4910th, Fumikich Tokoyami 4710th. Oh, so I changed the timeline a little and Bakugo is third. I guess Kirishima did train hard during this time. I better be careful of changing too much or else my future knowledge might become null, and I kind of am nowhere near strong enough to be able to handle it. I wonder what the teachers thought of my willpower. I intentionally made myself self-sacrifice. At least in the eyes of teachers. That is one of the best qualities a hero can have. And just like that, April comes, and the students accepted into UA are ready to begin their new hero academia. Kaminari was also making preparations of his own. He knows how the first day of the academy will be. So as soon as he wakes up at 5 in the morning, he pulled out a medical book from under his bed and immediately started reading it. The human brain is at its best two hours after waking up. Most people spend their time riding a car or going to work. Kaminari spends that time reading, usually medical books. Sometimes he searches the internet for hero fights, usually unknown heroes who have mostly useless quirks so he can try learning their martial arts moves. One thing he learned from watching these videos is that you must be unpredictable to your opponent. That is the key to getting an attack to hit. Then after two hours of studying in the morning, Kaminari started warming up his body by doing some stretching. Today he won't exercise to the extreme like he usually does in the mornings. Because today is the day of the cork apprehension test. Then after exercising he cooks a healthy breakfast with a lot of vegetables and meat. After that he goes to the bathroom and gets ready for a shower. When he takes his clothes off, he looks at himself in the mirror. His body is perfectly muscular, not too bulky but not too thin either. Nice. Then he goes and takes a shower. After the shower, he started going towards UA Academy. When he arrived there he saw that he was early. There was only one other person in the classroom Tenya Ida. As expected of someone smart like him, thought Kaminari. Then when Ida saw Kaminari he immediately went there to greet him. Hi, my name is Tenya Ida. It's a pleasure to meet you, classmate. As soon as Kaminari saw him acting as he used to in the anime. But he was different from Kaminari in the anime. Here he was the same height as Ida and about the same muscular structure. So, Kaminari just smiled and said to him in a playful tone. Nice to meet you, Tenya Ida. My name is Kaminari Denki. Since we will be classmates for a long time, I hope we can get along. Then Kaminari's smile widens and just pats Ida on the back while saying. So just relax a little. Ha ha ha. Ida was a little shocked to see someone friendly like this, especially since he knows that Kaminari was the first in the entrance exam ranking. He isn't arrogant or anything like that. Then Ida smiles a little and says, Ah, so you are the first ranked in the entrance exam. Third day. Then as he was about to continue, the door opened again and the third student to arrive was Akugu. When he sees Ida and Kaminari talking, he just says, Who did you say was number one? When Kaminari saw Bakugu, he just smiled and said in a teasing way, Oh, so you heard what we were talking about. Since we weren't talking loudly or when you opened the door, that wasn't the last thing that was being said. So, I can only assume that you must have been too nervous to enter the door and that is how you heard our conversation. Isn't it? Immediately, as soon as Bakugo heard what Kaminari had said, he yelled, Hell no, you pee hair. That isn't what happened. When Kaminari heard Bakugo insult him, he just started laughing. Ha 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 ga ha ha ha. Bakugo gets even more pissed off when he sees him laughing. What are you laughing at? Are you brain damaged? Then Kaminari laughs even more. He laughs so hard that he was almost out of breath. And then points towards Bakugo's hair and says, Ha ha ha, our hair looks the same, you just called yourself pea hair. Ha 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 ha. That is like a middle school insult. Pea hair. Ahaha cough. Kaminari started coughing a little from laughing too much. 
Then Bakugo gained an angry look on his face. Kaminari stopped laughing so hard and just snickered. Then, with just a smile, he said, Sorry, sorry. How about we start from the beginning? My name is Denki Kaminari. Then Bakugo, when he hears this, he calms sigh. My name is Bakdash. Then, as Bakugo started talking, Kaminari interrupted him and continued his introduction. Blood type O, quark electrification, 180 centimeters tall. My address is... Immediately, Bakugo got mad again. What the hell is wrong with you? Kaminari just started laughing again while saying, Ha 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 ha, you are such a dumbass. What the hell did you say? After some time, Bakugo gets tired of arguing with Kaminari. And he sits down on his seat. Kaminari can't help but think with slight regret. Ah, oh, maybe I shouldn't have made fun of him so much. And I was having so much fun. Now I am back to being bored again. Then I also decide to sit down and wait for Kirishima or Mina, thinks Kaminari while reviewing the plan that he has cooked up for the next stage. After some time, Kirishima and Mina do arrive. And when they see Kaminari talking to his other classmates like they have known each other for years, Kirishima can't help but think that Kaminari truly is a friendly person. He can make anyone a friend of his. Plus, he is helpful to anyone who asks. While Mina has a different thought process when she sees some of the girls here, she can't help but think a little nervously. No, there are so many pretty girls in here. I will have more competition here than in middle school. Then during this Kaminari sees that Midoriya finally arrives at the classroom. He then thinks, things haven't changed too much from canon. That is good, for me that is. I look at the children in front of me. They were the ones whose quirks have the most potential to develop into something pro-heroes. They're the class 1A. Though usually there are transfers through the classes, there are those who will stay in 1A class through the whole three years in here. I look at the kids. There are quirks like the one Shoto Todoroki has. With a quirk like that, he will become a pro-hero. In this world, no matter what anyone says, people are truly born unequal, though they can be somewhat overcome with hard work. Up to a certain extent. Then I look at the others as they come to the field where I will hold the quirk apprehension test. As they all come, I look at the one who I think has the best potential amongst all the ones in here. Denki Kaminari, people with electricity quirks are not really anything special. Even though they are flashy, they usually don't achieve their full potential. But from what I saw at the entrance exam and how he uses his quirk, that kid is going places the way that he uses his quirk whether it is harmful or not, you can't help but praise his creativity. Though the drawback might truly be too much is what Nizu said is true, but I believe that with the right equipment it is very easily fixable. Then, when they are all here I just tell them with my usual voice. Today, we will be holding the quirk assessment test. To see where the limit of your quirk is. When some of them hear this, they say, But orientation, we are going to miss it. Say well, then I guess I better teach them some things as a teacher. I just say to them, if you want to make it to the big leagues, you can't waste things on pointless ceremonies. We here at UA are tethered differently, and I can run my class as I see fit. Then I look at all of them in the eyes and say, You have been taking standardized tests your whole life, and you have never used your quirks in them before. The country is still acting like we are all born equal and not letting those with power to excel. It is not rational. One day the Ministry of Education will learn. Then I turn towards one of the students and say, Kaminari, you managed to get the most points on the entrance exam. What was the furthest distance softball throw when you were in junior high? Kaminari seems to think a little before answering. 83 meters. I think, good enough. I mentioned to him, try doing it with your quirk. Then as Kaminari comes forward and goes into the white circle, I tell him that anything goes as long as he stays within the circle. Then Kaminari just seems to think something, so I just say to him, Come on. Just go. You are wasting our time. Kaminari just smiles and says, Sure, Aizawa, sensei. Then Kaminari just simply throws his ball. High in the air and as it was coming down. I see a little electricity go through his body. So is he going to strike now? But then I see that even more electricity starts going towards his right leg. What is the kid thinking? Then as the ball comes down, he kicks it. Boom, and it flies away. Well, I did say to him that anything goes as long as he stays in the circle, but it is a ball throw. 
Well, I guess I will also say not to kick the ball to the next batch of students that comes around. Then I look at the device in my hand that measures how far the ball went. I see the number 1623. So 1623 meters. That is pretty good. Then I show it to the other students. When they see it, they all gasp. Whoa! Then I hear the pink girl say, That looks like fun. I want to go. I also hear someone else say, Using our quirks as much as we want. This is what I am talking about. These children are taking it as fun. Are they? I just look at them with a cold face and say, Fun. Is it? You have three years in here to become heroes. You think it's all going to be fun and games. Then I smile at them and say, Idiots. Today you will compete in eight physical tests to gauge your potential. Whoever gets the last place has none. And will be expelled immediately. The students all look shocked. What? Then I look at all of my students again. As I told you before, I get to choose how I run my class. If there is a problem, you can head home right now. Then the gravity girl, her name was Achiko Yurarika if I am not wrong. She seems a little riled up and says, We just got here. You can't send us home. Even if it wasn't the first day, that isn't fair. These little shits are annoying. My voice gets a little trace of coldness on it when I say to her, Oh, and you think natural disasters are? Or power-hungry villains? Catastrophic accidents that wipe out whole cities? And oh, the world is full of unfairness. It is a hero's choice to try and knock back that unfairness. Then I look at all my students and say to them, If you want to be a pro, then you will have to push yourself to the limit. For three years, UA will throw one terrible hardship after another at you. So, go beyond. Plus ultra style. Then I just lazily point my finger towards them and, with a smirk, I say to them, Show me that it is not a mistake that you are here. Now we are just wasting time by talking. Let the games begin. Kaminari, MC, POV. Then as the test starts, I can't help but look around the people here. Currently, the strongest in Class 1A is me. After that, it is Kirishima or Todoroki depending on the circumstances. Then there is Bakugu and after that it depends, but Kirishima is the only one who could even make me use some of my real lethal power. With the others, I will have to be careful. My quirk has become more lethal the more I train it. His high defense is good against power type fighters. Well, I am not necessarily the strongest in Class 1A, it's just that I am a counter against them. Kind of like Aizawa would be to me, and almost everyone else. Then the first test begins it was the 50 meter run. Lita is the first in that with 3.2 seconds. At least until it was my turn, when my turn came my running partner was Momo Yairozu. When I look at her, I see that she has created some type of skateboard. I just smile at her and ask, Are you nervous? She just looks at me and, with a nervous look on her face, she says, Is it obvious? We got to know each other in the classroom before Aizawa came. I just keep smiling and say, Just a little bit, but I bet that you already know about the test. Don't you? She just nods her head and whispers. Yeah, I do, but I still need to show that, even though I got in through recommendation, I am worthy of being in here. Then I hear the countdown started and the measuring machine says, Go. Immediately, electricity runs through my body. I can see that all around me, I can feel my hair go up. Things have stopped moving, well almost. My don't just make me physically faster. They make my electrons in my brain move faster to keep up with my body. I studied a lot about the normal human brain to be able to achieve this type of power. I can also see that Momo moved by one centimeter. And I haven't even started moving yet. I guess I should start running now. Fwash! I arrive at the finish line and stop the lighting running through me. When I do, so I get a split second of disorientation after the world starts moving again. I should work on that split second disorientation. Then the machine announced. 1.6 seconds. As soon as the others heard this, they immediately turned towards me. Even Todoroki has a shocked face while looking at me. After all, 1.6 seconds to run a 50 meter. And just like that, most of the test went like the cannon. Except that I got first place in all of them, well mostly all. Infinity is a bitch. And also when the ball throw came. Izuku did the same thing, Bakugo got angry like always, this is ridiculous. 
Also, I do notice All Might spying on here. He is in his buff form when he noticed me looking at him. He just gave me a thumbs up and did a pose. What a weird guy. Then I ignored him and started talking with Momo. While those whole shenanigans were going on, I just look at her and say, So your quirk is quite amazing, Momo. Can you create anything? She blushes a little at the compliment and just answers. Yeah, as long as it is not a living thing, I can produce it. Also, I need to know the atomic structure of something that I make. I just look at her with stars in my eyes. Wait, so you could create oil? That could also be like a flame-like quirk. Or maybe even create glue to restrain your enemies. Or even just create a flamethrower and a gas thrower to make your flames bigger. Oh, your quirk is so good and versatile. Momo just looked at me surprised when I gave her those ideas and at my apparent excitement. Then she created a notebook and started writing them down. Then she looks at me and says, I have had this quirk since I was four, and only in a couple of minutes you have given me amazing ideas. Please keep talking some more. I just smile and say, sure I can. How about creating a robot suit around your body and even combine it with the flamethrower thing? Like a giant mecha? Then during the next part of the tests I kept giving her ideas. I guess even though she is intelligent, she isn't very creative. And just like that, the time came for Aizawa to show our rankings. I was first Momo was second and so on, also Midoriya was still in the last place. Then when Midoriya was in a panic, Aizawa just said, Oh, and I was lying, no one is going home. Everyone, except me and Momo, everyone's brains went blank for a split second from the relief. Then Aizawa continues, just had to make sure you will give it your all during the test. Waha! Then Momo just looks at them casually and says, Oh, I thought you knew? Maybe I should have said something. And just like that, the test is over. When it was all finished, me, Momo, Mina, and Kirishima all were talking together. Then Momo curiously says, Oh yeah, your quirk is quite amazing also, Kaminari. What is it? Seems pretty strong and cool. With that lightning around you? Is it some type of super enhancement type like All Might's is suspected to be? She asks a lot, which gives away the excitement that she seems to be hiding. I just laugh when she says that. Ha ha ha, no, it isn't anything like that. I dash dot. No, it isn't anything like that. Mina interrupts me and starts explaining. Denki's quirk is called electrification. It allows him to produce electricity, and that is the only thing that it does. Then she grabs my hand and says, But it isn't the quirk that is awesome. It is Denki-chan that made the quirk awesome. I just smile but in my head. I analyze why Mina is doing this. We are indeed close but why is she being so clingy? Aha! I get it now. I already know that she has a crush on me so she must just feel threatened by Momo. She is after all smart, beautiful and has a good quirk. If she knew that Momo was also rich, I wonder what her reaction would be. Even while having these thoughts on the outside, I am acting like I always do. I just smile and say, Yeah. Remember back at the time when I used to short circuit? Ha 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 ha. Mina laughs at that. Well, to train my quirk I had to do a lot of things back in the day. Even Kirishima is a little curious and says, Short circuit? I never saw you do that. Then Mina gets distracted while telling the story about how I turned dumb when I used to spend all of my power. Even Momo chuckles a little at that. I just smiled also and started getting closer to her while walking. Then Momo goes in another direction when we are separated from the school gates. Probably having her limo and maids waiting for her. I, Kirishima and Mina keep walking in the same direction we have the homes close by. And also we have to board a train to go home so there is that also. And just like that. My first day at my hero academia ends. Quite interesting if I must say so myself. Momo Yairozu POV. As usual, I wake up in the morning and dress up in my school uniform. After that, I do some stretches to keep in shape. I must keep my body in shape and healthy. That is rule number one as a hero. Then the maids come and tell me that the food is ready. I eat a lot of sweet food to help me when I use my quirk. Especially since yesterday, I tried most of the ideas that Kaminari Kuin gave me. I must say that he truly is amazing. I have to say that with his help today, at least six times stronger than I used to be yesterday. I have understood that my quirk doesn't need just smarts, 
but also a lot of creativity to be used at its utmost capacity. I learned so much from Kaminari Kuin. I wouldn't have been able to do anything like this without his help. Then a strange smile appeared on my face while I was thinking about him. He truly is amazing. I wonder if he and Mina are dating. They seemed pretty close. Maybe I should ask Kirishima if Kaminari and Mina are dating? I know that he is a friend of both Kaminari and Mina. They have known each other before UA so he should know if anything is going on between them. Anyway, I cut off such a distracting train of thought as I go towards my limo. I just get on it and another maid drives me to the school. When I arrive, I see that half of the classroom is full and notice that Kaminari is talking with the invisible girl. I believe her name was Hagakure Toru. When Kaminari notices that I came into the classroom, he just waves at me and says, Hey Momo, you are very smart, right? Can you confirm something for me and Toru here? Even though Toru was invisible, I noticed from her shirt movements that she just waved her arms around expressing her embarrassment while saying, Denki Kuenai told you that it is embarrassing to address me with such familiarity. At first you must call me with a chan. Then as I was walking towards them, I noticed Mina and Kirishima were there just doing their own thinking while Kaminari just said, Hey come on now don't be so mean Toru. I think that strangers are just people who haven't gotten to know each other. When I get close to them, I can't help but think that maybe he is friendly like this to every girl. He is just a friendly person I guess. Then I just calmly said to Kaminari, What did you want to ask Kaminari? Then he turns around towards me and when he sees me he gets a bright smile and then he comes to my side and puts an arm around my shoulders. I can't help but blush a little. This is embarrassing and indecent. But Kaminari doesn't seem to mind this at all. He will still have to take responsibility for that. Not noticing my embarrassment, with his usual smile on him, he just continues. So I was curious if it was possible to create lasers with Toru's quirk. When he says that, I hear Toru complain again about talking to her with such closeness. I think for a bit before answering this question, it should be possible. If your quirk is light reflection that causes invisibility, or maybe it is just that and doesn't allow you any control over it and it is a passive thing, then Kaminari's face brightened and he said, I just got a new idea. Then he goes to the other side of the class and brings another student from our class with him. Then Kaminari just says, let me introduce Yuga Aoyama. His quirk allows him to shoot lasers in a straight line from his belly button. So if you use your light refraction, you could change its direction. It would be quite a nice surprise to enemies. When I hear this, I can't help but look at Kaminari with surprise. He truly is creative. If he is this creative and can think up such ideas of quirks he has known about for so little time. I wonder how he uses his quirk. That is when the bell rings for the lessons to start. Kaminari, MC, POV. As classes start, I am only half concentrated. I already know these basic high school things. After these lessons, this day will be another stage to make me seem perfect and above my peers in every way. Again, I need to put the image from the beginning that I am invincible and unsurpassed in every way. Power, smarts, creativity, grades, personality, and the instinct to be a hero. I don't have all of those qualities. But that doesn't matter. If someone believes a lie long enough, then it does become the truth. All Might isn't some type of invincible hero. The public thinks he is and that is taken as the truth. As the normal classes all finish, I wait for the afternoon hero course. And that is when I hear a voice from outside. I am here. Then the door opens and All Might comes in in his usual ridiculous fashion. Coming through the door like a hero, the class immediately becomes excited when they see him. Then All Might walks to the teacher's desk and says, Welcome to the most important class at UA High. Think of it as Hero Training 101. Here you will learn the basics of being a pro and when it comes to fighting in the name of good, let's get into it. Then he pulled out a badge with battle written on it. Then he says, Today's lesson will pull no punches. Some students are excited while other weakling cry babies like Midoriya seem a little scared. I will never understand what All Might saw in him. His only special quality is being quirkless and even then he still wanted to be a hero without even trying to train his body at all. That isn't something that should be seen as good in a person. That is called being a dumbass and not having the conviction to follow your dreams. Then All Might continued saying, 
But the key of being a hero is looking good. Then a compartment opens at the back of the class with numbers on it. I can't help but smile a little, finally, my hero costume. Then we all take their suitcases with us and then we go to the changing room. When I take all of my clothes, I look at my body. I have gotten muscles, but I will need to do some more strength training to buff these guys up. Though I am only 15 so testosterone hasn't kicked in fully yet. By adulthood I should be buff enough. Then I put on my suit. When I look at myself in the mirror, I must say I look pretty good on this. My costume looks like a knockoff version of Superman except for the whole red underwear thing. I also have a yellow lightning bolt on the chest of my costume. It is made of strong material that stops piercing attacks. Like guns, knives, and so on. After all, even though I am fast I am not damage resistant, at least not yet. Also it has a lot of useful stuff inside it. All Might POV. Then, when the future heroes come to the battleground. They are all in their hero costumes, they are good costumes. And then I see young Midoriya's costume. PFT I try to keep my laugh from coming out. But truly admires me, with one for all, he will undoubtedly become strong once he learns to control it. But he will have competition. There is Katsuki Bakugo. His quirk is very versatile. Plus, he has the instinct and intelligence to wield it correctly. Then there is also Shoto Todoroki. His father is number two here with just half of the quirk that he has. He is going to be one of the top heroes of the future. Young Kirishima. Even though his quirk isn't flashy or anything, he will become a pro in the future. And the person who will be young Midoriya's biggest rival for him to become the future symbol of peace. Denki Kaminari. A natural-born hero. He has the looks, the charisma. Even at the age of 15 and he is already stronger than your average pro hero. Aizawa also said that he heard him help his classmates improve their quirks tremendously just from knowing about them for a couple of minutes. He has talent and creativity. He developed his lightning quirk into some type of speed quirk. He has a high potential to become the next symbol of peace. He just by himself could surpass nine generations of one for all holders. Izuku Midoriya and Achiko Uraraka, Team A, versus Katsuki Bakugo and Tenya Ida, Team D. Winners Team A, after seeing this I just let out a sigh of relief. If young Midoriya had lost he would have gotten a hit in his self-esteem and that might have heavily halted his potential. As a teacher, I am fair to everyone so I would have called the game fairly even if young Midoriya lost. But I am still glad that the next successor of all for one has the guts to live up to his potential. Shoto Todoroki and Mizo Shoji, Team B, versus Mashireo Ojiro and Toru Hagikure, Team I. Winners Team B. This was a one-sided fight. Young Todoroki is at a different level than the rest. Fumikage Tokoyami and Tsuyu Ajui, Team H, versus Aijiro Kirishima and Hanta Siro, Team J. Winners Team H in an enclosed space. Young Tokoyami had the advantage with his dark shadow quirk, and young Kirishima truly was close to winning. But Team H won by a sneak attack truly marvelous. Denki Kaminari and Kyoka Jiro, Team G, versus Momo Yayorozu and Minoru Mineta, Team C. This was a fight I was truly concentrated on. I saw Kaminari say something to Jiro. She used her earphone jack quirk to just puncture one of the walls. Then she just points up. On the other team, Mineta has covered the hallway before you can come into the room with his sticky purple balls. And Momo Yayorozu I have noticed that she is a friend of Kaminari so she most likely knows a lot about his quirk. She has put some type of metal wire around probably to stop his lightning bolts from hitting them. Then she makes gas masks and some type of canister. Then she opens them and, oh, that is smart. She is going to use knockout gas against Kaminari. After all, no matter how strong he is, she knows that he will still have to breathe. She also blocked the door and windows with thick metal. On Kaminari's side, I see that when Jiro pointed up, Kaminari just nods and yellow electricity surrounds his body. Fwash! And a yellow and blue flash moves up the building right to the top floor where the bomb is. Then he... Boom! Just smashed the wall and made his entrance and touches the bomb. Winners Team G amazing! Both sides were thinking steps ahead. It is just that young Kaminari was just a little ahead. But he should soon be affected by the gas. Kaminari stumbled a bit and then... He straightened himself. Wait what? How did he do that? 
After completing their battle trial, they all came to the control room. I just looked at them and said, Amazing! You all showed the thinking of a true pro. Momo, you did amazing with your strategizing, and Kaminari Kuin, you were also amazing, showing the intuition and creativity that is rarely seen. You two are both the MVP of this game. Then I look at Kaminari and ask him, Anyway, how were you able to resist the knockout gas, young Kaminari? Even I couldn't figure that out. Even the others were curious in knowing this and they all paid attention to Kaminari. Kaminari POV. When I heard, All Might ask me how I was able to resist the knockout gas. I carefully used a little electricity on my brain to make me think faster. Well, Momo knows a lot about my quirk since I told her about it. I answer him with a smile on my face. Well, she knows a lot about it, but not enough. I also know just the way to stop them from asking me anything anymore. Just give super long explanations. But the opposite is also true. I know a lot about her quirk also. I had already thought of how she might use her quirk, and making knockout gas was one of them. I was confident that Momo would use this technique, and I was also sure that she would make something that can negate my long-range attack. I believed in Momo's intelligence to use the best strategy possible. So I also used that against her and made my new technique on the spot so that would be the only way to surprise Momo. In a way, I won by believing Momo's intelligence. I don't know if that makes any sense. The others look at me with shocked faces, but most have cringing looks as my explanation is too long and some didn't understand what I mean by it. After all, I just trusted in my enemies. Though Momo had a small blush on her cheeks because of my compliments about her. Then even All Might seemed a little surprised. He just gave me a thumbs up and screamed. Oh my god! I just looked at him weirdly. That sudden scream scared me a little. But All Might just continue saying. Truly amazing. A battle of intelligence. You knew that as a hero squad you would have to go against the villains, or you would lose because of the non-action. And like a true hero you came out of a pinch at the right time. I just smile at his compliment and point to my teammate Kyoka Jairu, the earphone jack girl. And I say, well it wasn't only me. It was also because of her that I could act with 100% certainty. I told her to listen for any sound and describe them to me. So I could get the gist of the situation. Jairu also blushed a little and played with the cable like extensions on her ears out of embarrassment. Then I continued saying, Oh, by the way, I call my new technique. I use the heat generated from my electricity inside my body to boil any substance that enters my body. They looked even more amazed when I said that. Momo even came forward and said with a serious voice, I can accept that I lost to you. If I had a quirk like yours, I would have never thought to use it like that. I just smiled at them while thinking. Well, the technique isn't something that can just be learned by knowing how they work. None of my techniques can be learned like that. I have such perfect control over the electricity inside my body. That is why this is possible. If I couldn't control it like I do, my new move would just boil my blood or my technique would just shock my muscles. I have absolute control over the electricity inside my body, which was learned over a decade of countless hours of training. Then there were some other battles after that. After that, we returned to class and as we did so Bakugo decided to leave the classroom. A little after that Midoriya looking all tired and spent out came into the classroom. Ochako, Ida, Kirishima, and some others went to congratulate him. As they did so, Midoriya looked around and when he didn't find Bakugo he asked, Where is Kachan? Kirishima says to him that Bakugo went home. And when he hears this, Midoriya immediately runs off. Man, those guys have a love-love relationship. Izuku loves Bakugo, and the latter loves himself. Truly a toxic match made in shitty heaven. Anyway, I need to think of some new techniques to fight with. Especially support type techniques for myself like then as we are going home. Momo, Kirishima, Mina, and now Jairu has also joined my group now. Then as we are walking and talking about random things. Jairu is explaining my quirk and I listen to what she is saying and try to think of how her power might be used best. My ideas mostly come from anime that I saw from my last life, but I am never telling anyone that. Also, anime here is bland as shit. The hero always wins and all that, also people have heroes in real life, so if it isn't some anime that has All Might as its main character, well no one is watching that. 
When Jairu finishes explaining her quirk, I just used my electricity to speed up my thought process. I love this move. It gives me time to think and because it has almost no drawbacks. Then after a while I deactivated it. Even though in the real world, not even a second has passed. I have had time to think about this a lot and answered her. Well, I don't know what to say, really. But your quirk is good at detecting sound, right? If so, you could potentially tell whether someone is lying or not. You could also use it to pierce your enemies and run a high sound voltage through them to knock them out. She just nods and thinks about that. Well, I don't mind helping my friends as long as they don't surpass me, that is. I don't exactly like being second in anything. Especially power, but honestly, even if the whole of class 1A came together to fight me. I could defeat them in around 4 minutes. My speed, even though not really at the speed of lightning or anything like that. I can easily blitz most of the pro heroes, All Might is the only doubt that I have. If he goes 100% that could be very dangerous for me. But that is only hypothetical. I can't exactly guess how a real battle could go. Also, there might be other speedster heroes or villains who might be faster than I. Who knows, even I am not 100% sure just how fast I am. Then, as we all go back to talking about other things, Mina suddenly says, Hey Kaminari, do you want to go out on a date? Immediately, Momo, Jairu, and Kirishima all froze in shock. The words that they were about to say stuck on their throats. As soon as I heard Mina ask me out on a date, I used my lighting powers on my brain to make it run faster. I needed to think of the perfect response. My brain calculating outcomes at lighting speed, this is a bad location and if I either say yes or no, it will mess me up to my plans. Mina isn't necessarily bad. She just isn't good enough. I currently have my eyes on Momo Yayorozu. She is beautiful, smart has a good personality, and is rich. Mina is beautiful but she is only my second choice. Actually she is my third choice. And since this is a civilized world, harems don't exist and instead of trying to choose two, you would end up with none. Even if someone had a harem in a civilized world, they would cheat on him. After all, no matter what, they would still feel insecure and want to go into another man's arms who appreciate them more and doesn't treat her like a spare sock. Anyway, I have already decided that Momo Yairozu is the person I am going to spend the rest of my life with. And I am not arrogant or insecure enough that I need a harem in my life to feel important. I have shaboinked countless times in my first life and I even had a reputation as a little bit of a playboy. In this life, I don't need a scummy reputation like that. After all, people look at you a certain way when someone has a reputation like that. Plus, Momo is pretty enough for me to enjoy spending the rest of my life with, even if I never get around to truly loving her. Her physical appearance would still be enough, and her personality isn't that bad either. True love is something eternal if Momo burned her face off, would I still love her with her ugly appearance? The answer is no. Then I think a little more about the answer, and that is when I decide to stop my fast thinking. As soon as I do so, I just smile at her and say, yeah, that would be fun. Since we are like a whole new group of friends, spending time together would be nice, better act completely oblivious. I hope that she doesn't push more, or that would ruin our friendship. Also, again, a very shitty move to ask me out in front of the others. Mina just gets a blush, though it is hard to notice because of her pink skin. She just started fidgeting a little, and then she said in an embarrassed voice, Why, yeah. That was what I was thinking too. I just keep obviously smiling. Then I continue saying, Then we should all choose a day to go out. Probably on a weekend since otherwise we would be too busy. Then we could go to get some burgers, karaoke. The smile on my face widens and I continue. Then, we improvise. Then after that, the conversation goes back to normal. Jairu goes in a different direction and Momo goes towards another to wait for Eliza to come and pick her up. Probably some maid with a limo. Then Mina, Kirishima, and I just walk together and go towards the subway station. We all go in. Then, when we arrive there, Mina goes towards her own house, and it is only me and Kirishima left. Then Kirishima said, You know what she meant right? I just look at him sideways. Yeah, I do. It's just that I am not ready for something like that yet. I have known her since childhood. I see her as a friend and nothing more. 
I also don't want to ruin the friendship that I have right now. He just sighs at that and says, I never thought that being popular was that difficult. I just smile while smugly saying, You have no idea. Come on now. No need to be a douche about it. Complains Kirishima, a small smirk on his face. By the way, let's talk about you. Which girl do you think is the hottest in our class? He just seemed embarrassed a little, but soon he started talking. Then tomorrow as I get ready to go to school, I prepare my heart for what will soon be my hardest challenge. The USJ, if my memory serves me correctly, that means that tomorrow will be the day of the USJ attack. I can't lie to myself and say that I am not scared. I am scared, and my body shakes just at the thought of it. But that will also be my chance to fight at 100%. I look at my hand and clench it into a fist. I have been training my quirk for over a decade. Endless hours of training have led me to become someone untouchable in my age group. Even though that is so, I have never fought at 100%. I want to see how long the distance between me and the strongest people in this world is. I can't hide forever. I can't half do my way through this. I will need to try my best. I need to get new ideas on how to use my quirk. I had a lot of ideas from my first life on how to use electricity and with the research, I was able to bring the ideas into reality. I was able to bring out the full potential of my quirk. Now I need to beyond its previous potential. Anyway, better get ready for school. After the future perfect existence can't be late at going to school. I joke a little to myself. When I arrive at the school gate, I see that some journalists have surrounded the front gate asking for interviews and such. Well then, I guess I better pun on my game face. I just walk forward towards the gate, and as soon as the journalists see me they swarm me. The first to speak is a female reporter. Are you in a class that All Might teaches? Can you tell me something about him? Is he a good teacher? Then as soon as she says that I am swarmed by questions. As soon as I see this, I just smile at them and say, I can answer, but can you guys be quiet? Even though my voice wasn't loud, they all heard it. And as if it has some strange charisma on it, they quiet down. Then I continue saying, even though he is new at this, he is a pretty good teacher. Then I chuckled a little and said, though it was weird seeing him with a hero costume on his first day of teaching. He even entered the door like a hero. I must say that it was quite a fun class that we had with him. You could also say that it could compare to the first class we had with the homeroom teacher. Then I look at the clock and say, oh my, then I start walking towards the gate and waving at the reporters while saying, I am sorry, but that is all the time I have. I wouldn't want to be late for class after all UA is the best and requires the best out of their teachers and students too. Then I just go inside. As I enter the classroom, I see that there were some of my classmates in there. I see that Momo has already arrived, but it seems like Kirishima and Mina haven't come yet. Tenya is already here, so are some others. I just say good morning and walk towards Momo. I just give her a slight wave as I get close. Good morning, Momo. She is pulled out of her thoughts and looks at me with a slight smile on her face. Oh, good morning, Kaminari. I wonder what she was thinking about. When I arrive at her desk, I just crouch down and put my elbows on her desk, and a teasing smile appears on my face. So, Momo, how was your morning? Did you also get bothered by the reporters? She sighs. Yeah, it was tiresome. She then puts her head on the desk in a tired way. Well, she probably had it worse than me since she has the nice person syndrome, meaning that she probably tried to answer every one of those reporters politely. Looking at her tired face, I decide to teasingly poke her cheek. She immediately jolts up and looks at me with a little shock and a light blush on her cheeks as she looks at me. W. Wa? I only smirk at that. Come on now, Momo, you need to be awake for the lessons. Sleepy head. As I teasingly say that, I notice from the corner of my eyes that the whole class is looking at us. Well, this is my territory now, so get lost, boys. Of course, even while thinking all those thoughts, I have a smile on my face. My brother used to say that a smile a day keeps society at bay. General POV. The whole class just looks at Kaminari and Momo. Those two have this strange atmosphere between them. When they start smiling at each other and flirting, a certain grape-like haired boy cries tears of jealousy. Damn it! High school just started. 
You electric bastard. It was not just Mineta, as some of the other boys have shocked looks on their faces as if they are stuck in time, and the color has drained from their faces. The entrance door was opened again and Bakugo entered, when he looked at the classroom and felt a strange atmosphere. What is going on here? When Bakugo saw what they were all looking at, he just looks back at the rest of the classroom and says, Losers. After that ordeal, the Kaminari and Momo seemingly don't notice the looks the others are giving them. But you still should try to act nice in front of them. Kaminari advises Momo on how to handle the news. Or they might not like you when you become a hero. A working relationship with the press is good. You could have some type of scheduled interview and not have them try and dig into your personal life. Even while Kaminari is explaining that, Momo was still a little flustered. Why yeah, I get that. Momo wasn't concentrating at all. Thinking strange thoughts about the yellow-haired classmate in front of her. Come on. I must clear my head of such thoughts. She thinks, trying to calm down herself internally. Then Kaminari just looked at her with a worried look on his face. Are you okay, Momo? You look a little sick. Do you have a high temperature? Then Kaminari's face got close to Momo's, and they touched their foreheads together. Momo didn't even have time to react, as he just says, You seem okay. But it would be better if you went to the infirmary for a bit and have the nurse look at you. Momo just mumbled slightly. And no, I am okay. Then she got even a brighter blush as he continues. I can carry you, if you want. Kaminari grabs her hands with his palms tenderly and says, I am really worried about you. You have been acting weird. Are you sure that you are okay? She just meekly nods. Kaminari lets out a sigh of relief. If you say so, then he just blushed a little and scratched the back of his head. I just am worried about you. After that, the conversation goes back to normal and all of the other students arrive. Kaminari goes back to his seat, a little before the lesson started. And so Aizawa enters the classroom, looking like he just pulled an all-nighter. Everyone settled in and waited for him to speak. Good work on yesterday's combat training. I saw the video and results. Sighs Aizawa. He then puts down a few papers that he was carrying. He turns to Katsuki. Akugo, you're talented, so don't act like a child. You have what it takes to be a hero. Just get your temper under control and think more rationally. Bakugo just looks to the side. I know. Then he addresses Izuku, who stiffens at the mention of his surname. You broke your arm again. Huh? The excuse that you can't control your quirk is getting old. I hate repeating myself. Just get your quirk under control and you'll be able to do a lot. Time's ticking, Midoriya. Then he addresses the whole class. Now let's get down to homeroom business. Sorry about the late notice, but today... I'll have you. He pauses for dramatic effect. It works as everyone gains a nervous expression. Decide on a class representative. Kirishima jumps from his seat. I want to be a class rep. Pick me. Kaminari can't help but smirk a little. You are one of the worst options. Then everyone starts shouting me. Me, me. In some form or another. Kaminari POV. I just look at them all, seeing them all act like that. I just bring my thumb and index finger together with electricity running through them and... Click! I snap my fingers and create a loud electrical noise to get everyone's attention. They all look at me, so I get up and start addressing them. Okay, look. I know you guys see it as a way to be the head of the class as a cool thing, but it's a tiring job. You have to stay at school when your classmates have already left. Then I try to make the position even more unappealing. You will also have to do paperwork and have to keep constant checks on everyone. It's something that needs to be handled with respect and understanding of the responsibility of leading each other. You wish to be class rep because you just want it. I just narrow my eyes. That's in my eyes, stupid. That's why I think it's not worth it. I see only two people who would make that position worthwhile. Seriously, class rep is more of a pain in the ass than anything. I have experience from my last life about this. Ajui speaks up. It almost sounds like you want to make the position so unappealing so you could take it for yourself. I just shrug. You can take it however you want. I am warning people that if they want to be class president, 
just be prepared for the work that comes with it. I mostly agree with Kaminari Kuin. It is a position of respect, and it should be treated as such. Ah, Ida, you would be perfect for the job and he was also chosen during the canon timeline. He values rules and seems like he could recite the entirety of quirk usage law in his sleep. Then, the rest of the class started speaking again between each other. I believe that we should hold a democratic election, but we haven't known each other for that long. So how can we trust the elected? Ajui speaks her mind. Then Kirishima supported her. Yeah, everyone will just vote for themselves. Then I decided to get a little on the chaotic fun and said, It's simple then. We can't vote for ourselves. In the end, we couldn't decide at all. Aizawa told us to choose someone before the end of the day, or everyone gets detention. He doesn't want to waste time, which is what we were doing. And now it's lunchtime. Then while serving us lunch, the hero lunch rush happily exclaims, Please, enjoy your lunch. I just looked at him with a smile. I will. Thank you for preparing the meal. Then as our friends group currently consists of Mina, Kirishima, Momo, Jairu, and me, Mina just looked around and said, Wow, it's still surprising that there are so many people. We find an empty table and sit down. I answer her by saying, Well, yeah, all four courses have lunch at the same period. I find it surprising that there are still empty seats. Still, we have to decide who's going to be our class rep. I still think that democracy, where we can vote for ourselves, is the way to go about it. Kirishima brings back to the topic. Still, I find it a bit stupid to have an option to vote of yourself. I say as I put a big spoon of rice in my mouth. Momo just sighs as she also starts eating. Jairu decided to say. But still we don't dash, Ad Jairu was about to finish her sentence. The alarm rang. There has been a level 3 security breach. All students, please evacuate outdoors promptly. Said a mechanical voice. Probably a type of computer system. As soon as I heard this, even though I knew what was happening, I used my lighting quirk to speed up my thought process. Everything becomes slower as I think up different ways that I should handle this, or if my already set up plan has any flaws in it. After I finish making some adjustments to my original plan since some of the circumstances are a little different, I stop using the lighting to speed up my thoughts. Then I notice that when people try to leave the cafeteria, they keep shoving and pushing each other crying and shouting. It only gets more and more intense as people are driven forwards like mindless sheep without a shepherd, since I'm pretty tall because of my training. I just jump a little and manage to look to the windows to our left and see Aizawa Sensei and present Mike stopping a bunch of reporters. When I see this, I widen my hands and clap. Boom when I did so instead of the normal clap, it was heard as if it was the sound out of a bullet. That sound drowned out any cry or shout. It stopped everyone in their tracks and made them turn to the source of the sound me. Well then time to show these sheep who is their shepherd. Will you all just stop for a moment and think. You're running like a bunch of sheep, trampling whoever falls to the ground with no regard for their safety. If you look out the window, you'll see it's just a bunch of people from the press that somehow got in. So take it slow, help those who fell and see if they need any medical attention. If so then bring them to the nurse's office. Think before you act. I noticed some people not being satisfied with what I said and some were even insulted. Well, I know how to handle beta people like them. You're people who got into UA. You are smart, so use that intellect. A way to calm down stupid people is to compliment them and call them smart after an insult. They will concentrate on what they like and want to hear. Me calling them smart. So, like sheep, they calm down and start walking normally and helping some who fell. Finally, the situation has calmed down. Damn, I should have gone to a school for economics and become a sketchy stockbroker to rip people off of their money with my sweet talk. Then we heard the police sirens and the whole situation was over. Only I knew that someone had sneaked in here and stolen the class timetable. Tomorrow will be the day. Then the student crowd dispersed and each went to their classrooms. As we are doing, so I just look at my hand and clench it into a fist. Tomorrow, I will be able to truly go at 100% power. I have never done that. I will finally see how far I have come. And how far I will need to go. I want to see for myself the distance between myself and all might. 
I will prove to myself that the countless hours of research, training, and coming up with new ideas wasn't a waste of time. Anyway, Aizawa comes into the classroom with his usual dead look in his eyes. So, have you decided on who and how you will choose your class rep? He asks us. I just looked at him with a serious face and said, I suppose democracy is the way to go. Most people in the end agreed. Then the voting started. When the results come in. Even I am a little surprised by the Midoriya Izuku. One Yayorozu Momo. Two Kaminari Denki. 17 okay. So I did better than I thought. Way better, actually. I mean, I always naturally show the confidence of a leader, which sometimes I don't have, but I act as I do. So, pretty much like every leader, act like you know what you are doing and create the illusion of competence. I voted for Momo, so I assume that she voted for me. I bet that Mineta also voted for Momo, and Ochako voted for Izuku. All of the others all voted for me. Well, I guess that could work too. I just got up from my desk, turned towards the rest of the class, and bowed. Thank you all for your confidence and trust in me. I will only abuse the power that was given to me for small and petty things. They seem a little surprised at what I said. But I just continue saying. But don't worry, I am a friendly fascist. I will be a tyrant that you should trust. And you should let me run your life because I do know what is best for you. When I finish saying that, the class catches on that I was making a joke. So they just snicker a little. Even I laughed at the end. I look at Aizawa, he has the lower part of his face covered, but I saw that his mouth twitches slightly in the form of a smile, so even he laughed a little. The next day comes. I am so nervous. I had to use acupuncture to force myself to sleep last night at all. As usual, I arrived at the classroom and acted completely normal, socializing and all that. But in the back of my mind, I was nervous as hell. When Aizawa came in, he saw us talking amongst ourselves. And then he grumbled from his sleeping bag. You're too loud, quiet down. You have only a few minutes before we have to leave for the hero basic training. So get into your costumes. Or don't since some of them might limit your abilities for this specific type of training. So the time has come then. While we are waiting for the bus to arrive. We are all in our hero costumes. The only one who isn't in one is Izuku since he ruined his during the previous basic training on his fight against Bakugu. I decided to have a small chat with Yairozu while waiting for the bus. It's nice having you as class rep. I don't have a lot of experience with this. So I hope that you can help me sometimes. I said while scratching the back of my head in embarrassment. It was true. I didn't have any experience being the class president in a Japanese school. Momo just smiles at me slightly and says, Congratulations on being the class rep. I just sighed and said, Honestly, I thought you were going to be the class rep. I even voted for you and all that. She just blushed a little at that. Thanks. I see that she is too embarrassed to carry the conversation, so I do it. Actually, not only was I surprised that people voted for me, but I was also surprised that I got so many votes. I mean, that is crazy. Ajui decided to take this time to intervene and said, We all saw what you did in the cafeteria. Takes great courage and calm thinking to do this. You also showed that you are good at leadership. Plus, she also blushed a little and continued. When you were saying all of that stuff, you kind of looked like All Might. Kirishima decided that he also wanted to intervene and said, Yeah, that was so cool back then. You had an awesome moment just like that one time in middle school, when they heard Kirishima say that all of the students wanted to hear what he had to say but it was interrupted as the bus arrived. Then Ida asked me, Class rep, do we form a line based on our numbers in class? I just wave at him casually while smiling and say, There is no need for that. It is a type of city transport, and seating isn't something that must be policed over. When he hears that, Ida just bows down and says, I understand. Thank you for informing me. I just smile and say, No problem, Ida. Then I look at Momo who seems to be in some kind of trace while looking at me. But I still ask, did I handle the situation correctly? Should I have done something different or anything like that? She seems surprised at my voice before giving me a kind smile. Beautiful and adorable. A truly deadly combination. Yeah, you handled it perfectly in my opinion. You have a way with people, Kaminari. Then suddenly, out of nowhere, 
I heard Aizawa's voice. If you're done gawking at each other, it's time to get in and get moving. I just looked to the side and saw him. Whoa, I didn't even see or hear him. Ahem, I just cleared my throat and answered. Right, Aizawa, sensei. I look back at Momo and she just nods. I tell some of the other students. The bus is here, so get in. Then, as everyone gets seated, we move to an off-campus site. My seat was in the middle of the bus. Then I hear Ajui ask Izuku. We all have some small conversations. Mina even tells the story of how I taught a dog how to breakdance. I can't help it as I snicker at the memory. Or how I one time used all of my electricity and made myself temporarily dumb as a rock. Ajui is the first to say. Unexpectedly. Denki does have some lame stories of when he was a kid. Ouch, that hurt. I mockingly say. Ajui then turns to Midoriya. Midoriya-chan. He turns to her and nods. Yes, Ajui? Call me Tsuyu-chan. She tells him. He quickly nods. Then Tsuyu says. Your quirk is very similar to All Might's. Why you think so? But, uh. He stutters, looking away. You're panicking way too much, Izuku. He sucks at lying. Anyway, I keep thinking to myself about what is going to happen soon, and I dozed off for a little. But it's nice to have a simple augmenting type quirk. You can do a lot of flashy stuff with it. Kirishima compliments Izuku's quirk. He raises his hand and activates his quirk, making his arm look like some sort of skin-colored rock. My hardening is strong against others, but it's not really cool looking. He sighs. Izuku leans forward. I think it's cool. Is a quirk fit for a pro? Fit for a pro, huh? You have to think about popularity too, you know. Kirishima sighs. My naval laser is pro-level in both flashiness and strength, says the guy who has been using French words every once in a while. Though it sucks that you get a stomach ache after a few shots. Then, to calm myself, I turn my head and watch the trees pass by and enjoy the view. Bakugo shouts something about murdering someone. The scenery is nice. Then I hear Aizawa announce. We're here. Quiet down. When we got out of the bus, we all saw the Space Hero 13. Hello, everyone. I've been waiting for you. When I hear that voice, I can't determine the gender of it. Man? Woman? Teletubby? This one is really confusing. It's Space Hero 13. Izuku happily exclaims. The gentlemanly hero who has rescued tons of people from disasters... Yeah, and it just confirmed my knowledge from the anime. Let's head inside. Thirteen gestures for us to follow him inside. I take in the diverse amount of biomes. This will be the new battleground. Everything from shipwrecks to fire, landslides and windstorms and more. This is the training ground I poured my heart and soul into so future generations could learn how to deal with future types of accidents and disasters. He turns to us. Its name is the Unforeseen Simulation Joint, or for short USJ. 13 tells us very passionately. Aizawa Sensei walks towards the space hero. 13 wears all might. He was supposed to meet us here. 13 walks closer, leans in and whispers something to erase her head. Then she raised three fingers. As expected, all might is temporarily in his weakened state. Aizawa then sighs in annoyance. Talk about the height of irrationality. He turns to us. It can't be helped. Shall we begin? Then he walks off of the side, letting 13 have the stage. Let's see. Before we begin, let me say one thing or two or three, four, five, six. Just say a few things. You don't have to give a specific number. Damn, I really am jumpy today. I need to be calmer. Everyone remember. I am sure you are aware of my quirk. Black hole. Then she continued her explanation about his quirk, quirks in general and all that. Then suddenly, the lights were enveloped by lightning and a black mist from the center of the USJ building. Immediately I hear Aizawa order us. Gather together and don't move. Thirteen protect the students. Then from the dark mist monsters come forth. And finally I see. The Nomu. Is this like the entrance exam? Where the lessons already started? Kirishima looks at the group of grotesque monsters. No. I replied to him as I just cracked my knuckles and stretched a little while I also got even closer to Yairozu. Kirishima looks at me confused. Then I frown and grimly add. 
Those guys are the real deal. They are villains. While all of the villains entered through the dark mist portals. Don't move. Aizawa sensei shouts as some of the students took a step forward. As I take in the various villains, the one that stands out the most, aside from the guy covered in hands, is Shigaraki. Then there is the dark mist man, Kirojiri, quite the sad story he has. Then there is the most powerful person in here, the one with a bird beak and exposed brain, Nomo. B but how? There's no way they could get into a hero school, Kirishima exclaimed. Immediately analyzed the situation and started explaining it to the others. There's always a limit to the capabilities of a person's quirk. If I were to take a guess, I'd say that they are only in this area. Now it's a matter of how it works. Does the user get tired the more they use it or perhaps the number of people teleported? Perhaps it is the distance that is the limiting factor? I do not think that they can just port willy-nilly. They don't need a direct line of sight. Perhaps they somehow got the geographic location and used that to make a point-to-point -point portal with that mist man's quirk. If that is the case, then he could have theoretically teleported into the school. Though it would be foolish for him to teleport all these villains into the center of hero school. Leading me to believe that they are only here and nowhere else. I mean technically they could have taken hostages but this is a hero school with heroes who are way more dangerous than some mook villains. Plus, I know from the manga and anime what happened. When I analyze the other villains, I see that most of them look like petty edgelords who never fought a real hero in their life. I wouldn't be surprised if most of them got into villain business for how they looked. Man, this hero society isn't perfect, but who is to say that any society is? Todoroki is looking at me. Then he sighs and turns back to the villains. This will be difficult then. Whatever the case with the teleporter, maybe there's still the issue of sensors not picking them up. Meaning that they have someone who can block transmissions. They attack at the moment when a class is taking place. Meaning they have a schedule of our class since this place isn't used as often as other training fields. They have the perfect opportunity to isolate us just by having someone with a quirk that interferes with signals. I take out a small earpiece from my hero suit's hidden pockets. Those are useful, I have a lot of weapons on them. I wanted a gun too, but it seems that they wouldn't give me that. Todoroki is right. I can't get a signal. This is bad. Since it means that this thing was planned then, Todoroki nods. And if this was planned, then they have a goal in mind and probably a way to achieve it. Aizawa sensei takes a few steps forward and says with a no-nonsense voice. 13. Start the evacuation. Since we can't reach the school, get them out of here as quickly as possible. Izuku just looks at Aizawa with a worried expression on his face. Sensei, please don't tell me you want to fight them alone. Even with your quirk, there are too many for you to win. Your fighting style revolves around capturing after erasing the target's quirk. You won't last in a frontal battle. Pro heroes aren't just one-trick ponies. 13. I'm leaving them in your hands. Aizawa prepares to lunge forward. And then he jumps down the stairs. I just sigh at this. For someone who talks about thinking rationally, he sure as hell did something irrational. Trust in Eraser. He's a pro for a reason. Come, we must leave quickly and inform the school once we're out of range of the interrupter. 13 reassures my worry. In reality, he's a cheat character that would make taking down these guys super easy. He is the definition of a hack. From the looks of it, he's massacring them. But there is also... That... I look at Nomu. That monster is here. He just tossed a four-armed guy into the ground with his scarf into the other three villains like some sort of ultimate move from a fighting game. Midoriya is in his nerd land of analysis, overlooking the battlefield and murmuring something. Let's go. I shout at him as everyone starts running to the exit. Though I do keep myself close to Jairu and Momo. When we're about halfway to the USJ exit, the Mist Man appeared before us. I will not allow you to leave. He states in what sounded like a gentlemanly voice. He just continued. A pleasure to meet you. We are the League of Villains. Then he continued in his polity sounding voice saying. It may be presumptuous of us, but we have invited ourselves into the home of heroes. The UA. High school to have All Might, the symbol of peace, take his last breath. I believe All Might should have been here. Has there been some kind of change? 
that teleportation quirk of his is truly good. I wished I had a quirk like that. Well, whatever the case may be. This is the part one I'm here to play. The mist starts to expand. Kirishima and Bakugu immediately jump at him to bring him down. I just say to them, Wait! You idiots! Bakugu unleashes an explosion, covering the place with dust and making it hard to see anything in front of us. Did you consider that you'd get beaten by us before you did it? Kirishima asks the villain hiding in the smoke. My my, that was close. With you being just students, I almost forgot. You are excellent golden eggs. He reforms with a metal neck brace around his neck. From the anime, I also know that is also his weak point. Out of the way, you too. Thirteen has her pointing finger aimed at a villain. My job is to scatter you and torture you to death. His mist spreads around our group. All I see is black. Next thing, I see a rock. I notice that I am falling, so I maneuvered myself midair and even used lightning to protect my body from the impact. Fell perfectly in the ground. Some would say a perfect hero landing. I look around. A lot of mooks. And the surroundings. The mountain zone. As expected, then two more portals in the air. Out falls Momo and Jairu. As they are both about to fall. Lightning surrounded my body and everything slowed down. My hair also floats up. I jump up and catch them both. Momo, Jairu. I nod at them both and immediately turn to the villains. Kaminari, Yairozu nods and makes a staff. Class rep, Jairu says with a little formal tone trying to ease the nervousness that she is feeling. As she looks around a little worriedly, she asks, Do you have any plan on how to get out of this? Kaminari, we are surrounded by villains, with unknown quirks, fully willing to kill us with them. Momo Yairozu POV, when I see the villains in front of me, I create a staff and get ready to fight them. But I hear Jairu ask a question to Kaminari. He doesn't answer, all he does is just stretch a little and then he says, You know, I have never gotten really serious in a fight. I was always careful. After all, I could destroy the surroundings or something like that. Then he smiles. I guess since you are villains, I should go all out then. I didn't see anything, no flash, no nothing. The only thing I saw was the boasting villains. Simply fell down. And Kaminari appeared next to me. I just looked at him with wide eyes and asked, What was that? I looked at Kaminari's back as he just said, My top speed. Then he gave me and Jairu a thumbs up. Don't worry. For I am here, in a flash, Kaminari said with a voice full of confidence. He had lighting running all through his body. Unlike before where there were only sparks going through his body now. The lightning has morphed like a protective yellow aura around him with flashes of lighting from time to time. Then suddenly I feel a tingle through my skin. Next thing I know I am at the exit of USJ. I see Jairu next to me. I also see Siro, Mina and Ochako. Then I see Kaminari, he still had his back turned to us. His red cape fluttering on the air as his blue costume looks in its own strange way. Very reassuring. I will handle the villains down below. Don't interfere, said Kaminari with a calm voice. When he says that, I look down and see Aizawa, Sensei being held down by the black monster with a beak-like mouth and its brains being fully exposed. Izuku Midoriya POV, Eraser Head, your quirk is pretty effective against others, but against Nomu who is naturally as strong as all might. It is practically the same as you being quirkless, childishly says the guy with hands all grabbing around his body. I just look at Aizawa Sensei. His head is about to be smashed in the ground. Mineta and Ajui next to me seem nervous as to what is about to happen next. Why am I so weak? Why did All Might choose me? I am not good at anything. I am not even brave. So why? Boom. But instead of the monster smashing Aizawa, Sensei's head, the monster himself is smashed away into a wall. The hand guy looks at the attacker and saw the true hero, the one who All Might should have chosen. Denki Kaminari. Fwash. Suddenly, we are all at the entrance of USJ. Even Aizawa Sensei is there, just holding his broken arm. Kaminari just looks at them all and smiles. Why can't I smile like him? I was too scared to even think of anything. Crap. 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 Don't worry. I will handle them all. Aizawa Sensei, 
You keep an eye on the guy with the hands all around him, said Kaminari with a fully confident voice, as if he was already 100% sure of his win. Aizawa Sensei just looked at Kaminari. He wanted to say something, but he stopped when he looked at Kaminari's eyes. The handman's quirk is some type of decay. He can decay anything that he touches with his hands. So be careful, said Aizawa Sensei. Kaminari just nods and brightly smiles. Don't worry, I will use my full power and go all out, reassured Kaminari. General POV. Kaminari just looked at the villains in front of him. He knew that Shigaraki is not a threat to him, he might actually be his natural counter. With his top speed, he would be able to kill Shigaraki hundreds of times before he can even blink. Kirojiri appears next to Shigaraki and says, One of them was able to escape. I was also unable to kill Eno. 13. But he is now incapacitated. Shigaraki just looks confused. Who? You? Kirojiri, you had one job. If you can't be a proper warp gate, then our plans have crumbled, said Shigaraki with a childish voice. Then he scratched his neck as he continued. It's game over, for now. There is no doubt that if they throw dozens of pros at us, we can't win. Should we hop back dash? As Shigaraki was talking, Kaminari took this chance and, fwash, he ran towards Shigaraki, and as he was about to shock him to knock him out, a huge dark portal opened above him. He noticed something touching his lightning armor, and Kaminari's self-programmed instinct kicked in. Fwish! Boom! He dodged as the fist came down and smashed at where he used to be, creating a crater. He looks at his attacker and sees that it was Nomu. Kaminari is faster than Nomu when he is using, though Nomu can still move during the moment when the time slows down for him. Nomu, while unbelievably fast to the others in 1A, to Kaminari it still seems only about as fast as a sluggish person in his eyes. Then another small portal slowly opened up at Kaminari's back. As soon as it touched his lightning aura, Kaminari automatically dodged. Boom! And another of Nomu's punches hit the ground. All of this happened under one second, to the others looking at it. It would all seem like random craters were created on the ground. While looking at this, Kaminari decided to directly go towards Nomu. He dodged his telegraph punches and went under his legs, going directly for Shigaraki. His hand has taken a claw-like form as lightning claws appeared at the end of each of his fingertips. As he is about to stab Shigaraki, Kirajiri seems to panic as his two lights on his body, that represent his eyes widen. As he was about to create a portal, but he was too slow as my lightning claws sank deeply into Shigaraki's stomach, BZZZZT shocking him as Shigaraki's eyes roll to the back of his head. Knocked out? Shit, this is bad exclaimed Kirojiri as he was about to create a portal to get Shigaraki out of here. But suddenly some type of bandages wrapped around him. And then, Aizawa came and kicked his armored part in the ground. Aizawa stepped on the armor as he was holding his own broken arm. Make one move and I will crush you. Kirojiri, in a second of panic, was trying to come up with a plan to solve this problem. When he suddenly looked towards the students at the entrance of the USJ. An OMU attacked the kids at the gate. Aizawa's eyes widened in shock as he said, Damn it! But before his head could even turn around, Boom! Numu had propelled himself at full power towards Momo, Ochako, Jairu, Midoriya and the others. Kaminari followed him at his full speed, but he saw that even with his full speed because of the head start and the propelling strength of the Nomu. He was slower than it, he had to run last obstacles and up the stairs, but Nomu was just in a straight line. He then took a knife from the shoe of his hero suit and used his lighting to give the knife a push. Fwish! He threw it where he predicted Nomu would be at, he had never tried this before, but he hoped that it would land or Nomu will be able to kill someone with his strength before Kirishima can arrive there. But suddenly Boam Nomu flies back and he is smashed on the ground. Worry not! For I am here! Kaminari! MC! POV! Worry not! For I am here. As soon as I heard that, honest relief rushed all over my body. Boom! Nomu's body crashes on the ground far away as it is punched by All Might. While still in my lighting armor form, I immediately appear beside the other students at the front gate. 
As this is all happening, I notice Kurojiri using this moment to make a dark mist under Shigaraki's unconscious body and teleport him away from here. But All Might had a serious look as he went and fought Nomu. I am glad this happened. I just look at the palm of my hand. Weak. It might seem that I was at an advantage, but I was losing. I had another five minutes left until my lighting armor mode wore off. This mode, unlike speed of lighting, is very taxing on me and my body. It pushes my body beyond its human limitations. My mind can also keep up with my speed and the auto-dodge sequence that I have made that when someone with enough power touches my lightning aura I would dodge. That auto-dodge move was extremely difficult to make because every time it shocks a part of my brain that deals with my instinct to automatically dodge. I have my quirk developed to its max. The power output is up to the max, I can store up to 200 million volts. The moves which should be impossible to achieve, I achieve them. I have made my quirk something amazing and when I become a pro hero I could probably reach the top 5 with my quirk. But that isn't enough. I just look at All Might fighting Nomu, he has an easier time fighting Nomu now than during the canon timeline. With Aizawa there to cancel some of Nomu's quirks it was no difficulty for All Might to blast Nomu away. It couldn't absorb the shock from All Might's punches so it just looked too easy for All Might as they fought. Haha. <laughs> that took more than 100 punches. Back in my good days, I would only need two to deal with opponents like him. I guess my power has been getting a little rusty, said All Might with overflowing confidence in his voice. Today I saw where I was with my power. I saw how I would compare to number one. And from what I saw, I felt unbelievable despair. Not from the villains or anything like that, what made me despair was the difference between me and All Might at 100%. I was nowhere close, plus with the quirks of the previous one for all holders, that was an unreachable gap between me and future Izuku at 100% with all of those other quirks. I don't like other people being better than I. I despise and hate people who are better than I. I loathe them. So I shall get stronger. There is still time until shit hits the fan. This battle has shown me my limits, and I am going to plus ultra out of them. I am going to surpass them all. One thing I miss in my arsenal is high damaging moves. The type of moves that could take out Nomu. That is why I could only dodge and run away from Nomu because I didn't have a movie to finish it off. I did ask for a sword in my hero costume but all they gave me was a knife so that was immediately out. I understand their reason that giving an untrained kid a sword doesn't seem smart. But come on now. I was planning on asking Momo to make me one but the sword wouldn't be able to handle the heat released from my electricity. My quirk doesn't allow me to control electricity outside of my body. Also, I understood that I have made changes from the canon timeline, but they were changes I was willing to make. All Might wasn't injured at all when dealing with Nomu so he will have an even higher chance of winning when he fights all for one again in the future. This is a change I needed to have an advantage over villains. Also, Aizawa's quirk is not weakened either. Since Nomu did not blast his head against the pavement floor. I am unsure about some things. This weakness and helplessness I feel are strangling me. I need more power. I need to work harder and work smarter. My father in my first life always said that the world doesn't owe me anything. I am not going to complain about how I got reborn with such a mediocre quirk when compared to the ones like Todoroki or One for All and so on. I made the choice to not try and take one for all due to the consciousness of the previous holders being inside it. But I can still feel as if the reaper scythe is around my neck at every decision I make. One wrong decision is all I need to die. Am I gonna lose this second chance at life from one of my mistakes? And just like that, everything ended. I have a heavy feeling in my heart like it could explode at any time. Dying again, will I reincarnate again? Or was the first reincarnation just a fluke? I don't know. Reincarnation has numbed my fear of death, but not erased it. I lived my first life to the fullest. I had a lot of regrets, but everyone has those. But I am selfish enough to want this chance at life, too. After some questions from the police and investigators they let us go, my classmates congratulated me and so on. I just smiled at them and acted like I just did the right thing with a calm face. I can't handle it. This is terrifying. I could die at any moment. I feel extremely uncomfortable. Even though I wasn't injured at all, I just went to the infirmary. When I opened the door, I just saw Midoriya and All Might in his skinny form. 
talking about something. I didn't pay attention, and neither cared about any of it. I just went towards Aizawa's bed, but he seemed to be sleeping. Damn, I guess I just looked at All Might and Midoriya. They had noticed me and were just looking at me with nervous faces. Were they scared that I had heard what they were saying? Well, I did, but it was stuff I already know. Excuse me, are you a member of the teacher's facility in UA? I asked All Might with a serious voice. All Might seems a little unsure of something when I ask that. Uh, yeah, I am. But did you hear what I and young Midoriya were talking about before you got here? I heard that they were talking about All Might's quirk usage time shortening to one hour. But I obviously wouldn't say that. Midoriya also had a very nervous look on his face. As expected, he truly is a horrible liar. No, I didn't hear anything. I was kind of distracted about the USJ incident earlier today. I wanted to know if I can get permission to use one of the training facilities. I answered to All Might. Midoriya looks at me with a shocked look on his face. After all, I don't have that cheery look on my face anymore, and I am acting differently from the usual 100% confident guy, with a smile on his face. Even All Might noticed this, after all, he is my teacher when he is in his buff form, and he has always seen me as the cheery type of guy. Of course you can use them, just tell me the time that you will be using it for, and when you will start using it, said All Might with a smile on his thin face. I will use it starting from right now, the period will last until it is time for the UA Sports Festival to start. I will be in there for every waking hour, I will sleep there, eat there, and everything else. I would like to ask Cook Rush to make me food for that time. From my knowledge of the past, UA Sports Festivals, they will be held after two weeks from now. I said all of this with a straight face, Izuku was looking at me with a face that completely signified his shock. In his wide eyes there was a look of admiration directed towards me that is annoying general pov when all might sees the determination in kaminari's voice he can't help it as one of his stray thoughts went towards a dark thought in his mind if he had met kaminari before giving one for all to young midoriya who would he have chosen as his successor even he doesn't know the answer to that question or more likely he doesn't want to know all Might confirms to Kaminari that he would take care of everything, but he will have to come by tomorrow for his reservation. Kaminari just bowed down as he said, Thank you very much, sir. All Might just smiles and says, Yagi. My name is Tashinori Yagi. I see then. Thank you very much, sir Tashinori. And then Kaminari walked away from the infirmary. All Might could only sigh a little and scratch his head as Midoriya took this time to ask. But sir, wouldn't Kaminari's parents be worried about him? And they wouldn't allow him to do something like that? All Might just looks at Izuku. Young Midoriya in the written acceptance exams the question, why do you want to be a hero? The answers are usually the same, you know, except Kaminari Denki. In all of Yue's history, there was never an answer like that. Izuku looks even more curious and asks, what was his answer then, sir? All Might looked conflicted as he said, because being a hero is all that he has left. Kaminari POV. I got to the training ground as All Might had promised. It was one of the empty training grounds that had different rock formations all around me. I was still in my school uniform, so I slipped off my shoes and took off all of my clothes. When it was just me and my boxers, I looked around and saw the well-lit training ground. The first thing I did was enter my strongest form. I just traversed around a little around 10 minutes before I started feeling my mental capacity start to drop. Before I went full retarded, I stopped the electricity outage and fall on my back. I don't mind the hard rocky ground hitting my back since I have my muscles to protect me. Sigh, I have the speed that even surpasses All Might, not by a lot, but I can confidently say that I am faster than him. My reaction speed is also faster since I can auto dodge. What I miss in my arsenal though is a strong move that can kill something like Nomu in one shot. Something that can be called my hidden ace. If I could control the lightning I generate that wouldn't be a problem since I could easily wreck someone's body by running lightning through their bodies and manipulating it for critical damage. I can store up to 200 million volt inside of me. That is one-fifth the power of a lightning bolt. It might not seem a lot if I put it like that, but to someone like me, I can confidently defeat any student in UA with maybe the exception of Mirio. Two days have passed since I started thinking of this problem. After another day at school, 
I just put down my school bag. I finally got a breakthrough. I have been concentrating on the biological side of electricity by allowing myself to easily surpass human limits. I completely forgot the physics applications of electricity. I have been concentrating too much on trying to copy anime and forgot that I can use real physics ideas on this. First I pulled out a physics book about electricity that I had been reading every free second that I have had these couple of days. I just smile, this should work. I take out my wallet and pull a coin. I take off my clothes to not get them dirty. Then I take a deep breath and flip the coin in the air. Electricity isn't just that simple. If I can generate electricity, it means I can also generate some magnetic force. I take another deep breath and use electricity on my hand as the coin flips down towards my hand. I just smile and flick the coin with my thumb. Boom, a sonic boom is created as boom, the coin goes through the rock formations, all of the rock formations, creating huge holes through all of them and leaving red circle formed holes in them with a red over hue inside where it pierced showing the heat. Boom, it even pierced through the ceiling of the training ground and flew towards the sky. Ha 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 ha. I can't stop myself from laughing like a madman. That was way more powerful than an All Might punch that could kill Nomu in one hit. I looked at my hand if it had any injuries. There were none. Yes. This is the power I wanted now. I just need to go beyond it. Again. It was a perfectly spammable move. It doesn't even use an excessive amount of electricity. And this does give me some more ideas on how to use this. I just lie down on my back. Now I can finally rest a little. I remember back in my first world brother used to say that hard work doesn't always translate to results. So it's better to work smarter than harder. But big bro was kind of a psycho so I should take his words with a grain of salt. I still remember that one time when I asked him what he would do if I was killed in an accident. Flashback. I was eating a pika that I bought with my brother's money. I see that he is also on the table sitting opposite of me eating some bean soup. I looked at him and asked a stupid question. So, what would you do if I died? He just looks at me and raises a questioning eyebrow at me. WTF? I just literally woke up. And you ask questions like this? Why don't you just ask me to go and stop three buildings on fire while you are at it? I just sigh at this. Come on now, no need with your dry sarcasm, brother. But really, though, what would you do if someone killed me? Brother seemed to think a little, then he said, well, if someone killed you, I would obviously grape his mother and sister in front of him and then torture them. After that, I will use a rusty spoon to slowly dig out the balls of the guy until they are all gone. My brother said all of this with a casual tone, as if talking about the weather. He was different from the times in how he acts with people in public. For the first time in my life, I understood what type of person my brother was. He was cold, calculative, and manipulating. But above all else, he was strong. One time I asked him, Brother, I would love to be like you. Teach me how you do it. How you manipulated that shopkeeper. Brother just looked at me and sighed. Listen, little bro. You are not going to be like me. You can't be like me. I had certain experiences that taught me how to become like this. You don't have them. But you have another weapon that you can use. Oh yeah. And what is that? He just smirked at me. Pity? Pity? I asked him curiously. His smirk widens. Yep, pity. Weeping about tragedy isn't going to change anything about it. So better move on and use this disadvantage into an advantage. Flashback ends. Act like prey. But be a predator. Use pity to lure in your victims. That is one of the last lessons that my brother taught me. But for all of his intelligence and cunning, my brother still died way before me. I wonder what he would have done if he was in my place. Yeah, he would probably be ruling the world by now. He 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 or probably being a normal person. God, he was an asshole, funny, but still, he wouldn't even deny it and just joke about it. His actual last lesson before he died, he just said, if you are going to try to do something, be sure to be the best at it. I feel some tears flow from my eyes as I recall my memories with him. Remembering another piece of his useless excuse about how he acted behind closed doors. Narcissism that can be backed up is called confidence. The next day after I learned how to use railgun, I have a happy smile on my face that I can't wipe off. I am not going to lie to myself. 
I am very excited. I was planning on asking out Momo today. Obviously not making it seem like a date, that would be dumb. Most guys don't get a date because they asked for a date. I need to be subtle with this. Also, Momo is too dull and innocent to understand and most likely will not accept when asked a direct question to go on a date. So it's time to put my game face on. It has been a long time since I asked anyone out or been on a date, but I will still use my strongest manipulation method called Pity, general POV during lunch break everything was normal. In 11 days would be the sports festival so everyone was trying to better themselves in certain ways. Kaminari and Class 1A were all seated at the same table. They were all discussing things like battle and all that. Even Bakugo was acting cordial as he talked with Kirishima. Kaminari had a calm look on his face as he looked at Momo. He has been strangely quiet ever since the USJ attack. Even though he still smiles when he sees everyone, the smiles seem more forced now. The class didn't want to see their class president and their friend who saved them during the USJ, pushing himself beyond his limits while trying to save them. Mina, who had known Kaminari since they were kids, was the most worried. She had never seen him so worried. Hey! Kaminari called out Mina, but to her surprise, Kaminari was distracted and kept looking at his food. She gets a little upset at this and decides to loudly scream. Kaminari, wake up! Immediately, Kaminari is startled at Mina's shouting. He then looked at Mina, with wide eyes full of surprise and unexpectedness. How can I help you, Mina? said Kaminari with an unusually calm tone in his voice, and no smile on his face. Mina just pouted at Kaminari. Come on, Kaminari, stop being so gloomy. When Kaminari hears that, he just smiles and clasps his hand as an apology. Sorry about that. I have been too distracted lately, but even though he said that, Kaminari still wasn't like his usual self for the rest of the day. After all, classes had ended Toru who has the invisibility quirk, went to the bathroom, and as she was coming back she saw something, Kaminari and Momo were talking about something. I wonder what they are talking about, thought Toru as she still kept trying to keep herself from listening in as it would be kind of disrespectful. But in the end, her curiosity got the better of her. So she took off her clothes, rendering her truly unseen to the eye. She got close to them, and she heard Momo say, I don't know any normal place where we could meet up. Well, can you meet me at the Shikatsu Boulevard? I can show you around, and then we can talk a little, said Denki, as he had a small smile on his face. Momo nodded and confirmed. Sure. Let's meet in there. Charlotte will drive me to the boulevard. So when Kaminari became president of the classroom, he had suggested that all of the one a class make a group online where they could chat together. So that is how Toru got the phone numbers of all the rest of the members of the classroom and notified them about what was happening. She asked them if any of them would be interested in stall, I mean follow them on their secret date. These are the replies that she got. Aoyama. No madam I, unfortunately, am very busy today. Mina. W. What in no way Kaminari is dating Momo? This can't be happening. Ajui. Sure. Frog emoji Lita. It is common courtesy to not interfere in another student's private life. We should stop this at once. In the end, only Midoriya, Ochako, Mineta, Jairu, Ajui, Kirishima, Siro, Mina, and Toru went to stealthily follow them. As they did so, they saw Momo arrive 15 minutes earlier, that was around the time they arrived too. But Kaminari was already there. They couldn't help but think that Kaminari being very punctual was weird. He always had this fun, almost playboyish personality. But he strangely is a good student, studies a lot, actually never had a girlfriend, Mina and Kirishima confirmed that. He is also a hard worker with amazing kindness. Midoriya especially had a huge blush as he looked at Momo and Kaminari talking and genuinely smiling together. Izuku was amazed. He has never even known someone close to him who dates or does anything like that with girls. Then Jairu uses one of her cork earphone jacks and pokes them into the ground to listen to the conversation Momo and Kaminari were having, and then she started explaining to the others what they were saying. But on the other side, Kaminari was laughing with Momo about some joke that he made. And then I just went completely dumb and the only thing I could think of was making an okay hand sign and say, Yay! Momo giggled at what Kaminari was saying. 
It's hard to imagine the Denki Kaminari being any less than perfect. Kaminari's smile turned a little sour and his expression twisted like he just ate a sour lemon. I am nowhere near perfect. I couldn't even protect you and my friends. If All Might hadn't come during that last moment, I don't think I would have even been fast enough to save any of you guys. Momo also became unsure of what to say. But in the end, she just simply said, We can talk about it. When she heard what she said, she blushed. And not in an ecky way, though. Kaminari just has a questioning look. Is that so? Then a smirk developed on his face. Well, it all began when, Momo POV. I look at Denki as he explains his life story. His parents dead and him losing everything along his life. I can see his eyes have a sad glaze to them as he looks at the side. I never knew. Someone like him had such a tragic life story. I wonder how he even has the resolve to become a hero after everything that happened to him. I can't even say my life story. Mine would sound like heaven compared to his. In the end, I can only drink the juice in front of me. After he finishes explaining to me his goals and aspirations for the future. In the end, he says, with a look full of confidence on his face. I will become the number one hero and surpass all might. As he announces that, I feel a strange chill go over my body. This feels weird. I have this strange belief in him that he will be able to do it. He is someone who inspires confidence. Suddenly my eyes widen. This is a familiar feeling, just like the one people get when they hear of all might. General POV. Even the others who were listening in on the date between Momo and Denki felt chills down their spines. They felt like Kaminari was just telling them a fact. Izuku looks at his hand when he hears what Kaminari says. Am I worthy of one for all? Kaminari would be better suitable. He just closed his eyes and turned around, walking away. Ochaki notices this and asks him. Izuku, Kuin, where are you going? He doesn't say anything as a look full of determination appears in his eyes. To train, I must train harder, or I will never be able to defeat Kaminari. All Might said that during the sports festival I need to show that I am the next symbol of peace and say, I am here. Two weeks pass by and the time of the sports festival comes around. Kaminari spends this time doing extensive training. As he is along the hallways, he can't help but be a little nervous about what he is about to do. This will increase his fame, but at the same time, it will put a lot of pressure on him. As Kaminari was unsure of something, he imagined what his brother would tell him at this time. Dominate them. You can do it. For you are my brother. Immediately, Kaminari stops walking for a split second and swears that it felt real. As his brain stimulates the scene, he was always best under pressure. So he thinks of the greatest pressure that he could think of. It was a really silly thing, but it helped him get his game in the game. Kaminari kind of lies to himself, thinking that his brother was staring at him. His body pumps adrenaline. His eyes concentrated on one simple goal. I must dominate them. As he walks to where many other UA freshmen are too. Many people murmured around him, but Kaminari was a little distracted. Still, he heard the excited and nervous whispers all around. He looks at Momo and says, Good luck, and be careful. Momo nods back at him too. I hope to see you in the finals then. They both have nonchalant looks as they say that. They are more concentrated on the soon-to-come exam. Kaminari nods in her direction. He won't be paying any more attention to her, and he will now concentrate on the competition. Though he is confident, even though it might be only his brain playing tricks on him. Kaminari can't help but instinctively listen to the whisper. His brother has always been correct about everything he has done. Midoriya looks around nervously as he sees the many people from the stands cheering for them. That is what Midnight seductively walks on the stage making most of the hormonal teenagers here drooling as they see her. Swish. She swipes a short whip on the side and as she notices that everyone is paying attention to her, she says, Now now play fair. The students start whispering about her very 18 plus outfit. Oi! Silence! Now freshman representative, Denki Kaminari 1A, calls out Midnight. Kaminari just walks forward with no problem, and he stands in front of Midnight, unlike the other hormonal teenagers around here. 
He has a calm look on his face as he takes the mic from midnight. He turns towards his fellow students and thinks about the speech that he wanted to give. But, that is so boring, thinks Kaminari and in the end, he slows down his perception of time to allow him to think some more about this. What would brother do? Contemplates Kaminari and in the end, he simply starts talking on the mic, great moments are born from great opportunity, and that's what you have here today. That's what you've earned here today. One day, some of you might be thinking that you have low chances of winning and that if you competed 10 times, they would lose 9 of them. But not this time. Not today, says Kaminari and then points towards the pro hero stance. Today we compete with them. Today we say with them. And we shut them down because we can. Today we are the greatest heroes in the world. In the end, Kaminari then points his finger at his fellow freshman UA students. You were born to be heroes, every one of you, and you were meant to be here today. This is your time. He points at the heroes on the stands again. Their time is done. It's over. I'm sick and tired of hearing about what great heroes they are. Screw them. This is your time. Reassure the geezers that they don't need to worry about the future. He then smiles his face and body language expressing 100% confidence as he finishes his speech by saying, Now go out there and take this opportunity given to you. W-O-H-H-H-H-H-H. The whole stadium rises in cheers. Even the other students who are supposed to be his competitors clap and cheer for him. Kaminari has a reassuring smile on his face. But on the inside, an emotionless state was spreading. I will need to win this, for I am the best. Dot. Midnight then explains the obstacle course and present Mike announces, Begin! Fwash! Before anyone could react, a bright flash passed them all. Not even ten seconds later and present Mike can't help but say on the mic, W. What? No way! He looks at Aizawa who was wrapped in bandages. What the hell? Announce it, that is your job. Let me take a quiet nap, says Aizawa not responding to what President Mike said. Winner of first round is Denki Kaminari. Form 1A. Announces President Mike, Kaminari stops as he looks at the trail that he left behind. Just being better than others isn't enough. You must be the best. And the distance between you and them must be unsurpassable to them. He then looks towards the stands, looking at a black-haired man with dark brown eyes and dark hair. He wasn't too handsome, but his smile could attract people to him. It was strange to Kaminari, as what he saw was just a cold smile with cold eyes looking straight at him. Isn't that right, brother? Kaminari POV. I just wait for the others to arrive, and I sit down and grab some iced tea. I can't help but think about the future. One for all, Shigaraki, and all that, if I said that I wasn't scared as hell, then I would be lying. I want to be someone who isn't influenced by fear and can think more clearly and without fear in the face of danger. But that is an unrealistic goal for the current me, and some people are naturally born without the need to fear. Back in the day, in my first life when I was scared of something, my brother was always there for me. When I was scared of darkness and told him that, he spent two days explaining to me that the dark is just the absence of photons in the visible wavelength minus 400 to 700 nanometers. That is when I understood the reality and logic behind it. And well, it's silly to be afraid of the absence of photons. Ever since then, I have never been afraid of the darkness. Brother wasn't afraid of anything, and that was because he knew the world around him and understood it. I don't know that, I don't even know where quirks come from and how illogical some things about it are, like Iris' quirk which returns a living being back in time. Like what the hell? How is that logical at all? Something like that should normally be impossible, and that is what I am afraid of. I am afraid of something that I don't understand. So I must learn more. I am broken out of my thought process as I see Midoriya pass through the finish line. Way after me, the difference between us is undeniable. People in the stands were even kind of bored by just how unimpressive the second place is in comparison to me. So I, I really shouldn't waste time thinking about things that I don't understand. I must be more in reality and enjoy my life some more. In my last life, I only had a couple of girlfriends during my teenage years. I was never the most charismatic person in the room even later in life. In comparison, 
My brother could make two straight girls kiss each other within 20 minutes. He had that scary charisma and manipulation skills. He could put doubt inside even the most confident person in the world. Crap. Why can't I be like that? Well, I am definitely going to try and be like that. I want to be like that. Maybe then I won't need to have all these doubts about the future. Doubts that suddenly all for one will escape prison and come straight for me. As everyone finishes, Midnight says that we have 15 minutes to find teammates. It doesn't take long for me to find Momo. She was in the top five just right after me, Midoriya, Todoroki, and Bakugo. It's pretty good because her quirk isn't speed-based. She is just that good enough. And that will be the rest of her life too, just good enough. That is where being the fifth best gets you. At just good enough, pretty much no better than a loser. This is the difference between someone like me and her. I will never be second place at anything I do. Though I still plan to marry her and have children with her because she is good enough. Still, even while I think that I have a smile on my face as I approach her. Yo, Momo, wanna join up? She looks a little surprised that I called out to her, and she even seems unsure for a second, but in the end, she agrees. Oh, okay. I smirk at her and just take a hold of her hand. Don't worry about the 10 million points that I have on my headband and all that. I promise you that we won't lose them. Ha ha ha. She smiles at me and nods. My brother always said that a strong man doesn't have to fear anything and that he will act 100% sure of everything. So I am doing my best at acting 100% sure of everything I do, for I am neither strong enough nor am I sure. But that doesn't mean that I can't act like a strong man who knows everything. I see that even though she says that Momo's body language expresses that she is still unsure of some things. Everyone here has amazing quirks from mind control, barrier, copy quirks, and many others. They just need to get my headband and I will lose. Or even if I pass into the next stage, it would suck being second place. That is just the best loser. In the end though, despite my doubts, I just smile brightly and reassure her by saying, Don't worry Momo, I am going to be the number one hero. I am not going to be number one by losing a simple high school match. Ha 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 ha. As she sees my confidence and reassurance in me, she too starts trusting in me. After all, one can't have someone believe in him if he doesn't believe in himself. I look towards the stand and don't see my brother. I know that it is a hallucination. But I still want to at least have it reassure me that everything will be alright. That would help. In the end, though, even I can't lie to myself for too long. So it is all up to me. I must be the best by myself in the end. Mina, Momo, and Itsuka Kendo from Class 1B joined us. I don't become the rider, I have Itsuka do that, as she can use her big hands quirk to keep people at bay. Remember the strategy, Itsuka you keep away everyone who gets close to you, though that is very unlikely. Also, Momo, make some roller skates for Mina too, and a rope to keep all of us together. I don't need the skates, but when I move at my top speeds, I want to be able to move you too. I keep explaining everything to them and what their roles are. Though I am confident on plan A, I am not arrogant or stupid enough to put all of my eggs in a single basket. Okay, now get ready. Three, two, I just look around me, seeing that everyone has their eyes on me. I can't blame them, they want to level up by taking out a high-level character. Except that they are so consumed by greed or naivety, that they can't see the difference between us. Then it seems like I will have to show them the difference between us. There must be no mistakes on my part. 1. Start. Immediately, as soon as she says that, the world around me slows down as I look at the people around me, I go at my top speed. I just go around by myself, stealing everyone's headbands. And I do all of that in a split second. Push! Suddenly, everyone stops and looks at each other. I smile at them all and show the stack of headbands that I have in my hand. You are too slow. I tell them and I see their faces covered in shock. Boom! Bakugo immediately uses explosions to propel himself towards me. Flash! But before he is even halfway to reaching me, I am on the other side of the arena. I smirk at all of them and say, Catch me if you can. Flash! Again, I move at top speeds, dragging Momo and Mina along. The crowd goes wild as I gained all of the headbands. The people in the stands start cheering my name. I dodge them all for the next five minutes. 
taking on all of the quirks and either dodging them with ease or blocking them. Even when Todoroki tried to freeze the whole platform on which we were standing. As soon as the ice got close, I used my electricity to break and heat the ice around me. I had Momo create a plastic sheet around the rest of my team so they don't get electrocuted. That is when I decide to roll the bandages in a ball and, fwash, throw them away towards the rushing mob of students. Immediately, like fish, they fight amongst each other. I can feel Momo's gaze as she looks at me. I just give her a side glance and smile. Now no one will chase after us anymore. Seems like Plana worked. Momo smirks back at me too. You knew this would happen all along, didn't you? Come on now, you give me too much credit. I tell her with a knowing smirk on my face. Obviously I knew. Yeah, we all did it, sarcastically says Mina as she looks at me. We totally contributed. Not like we were all just dragged around by you. Hey, someone is salty. It doesn't take long for the game to end. And no one came after us at all anymore. We in the end did hold on to the 10 million points. Now comes the time to tell the world that I am here. General POV. Mina could see that Kaminari and Momo seemed closer than usual. She felt a pang of jealousy hit her. She has had a crush on him ever since she could remember. And another girl coming and taking him away is kinda... Hurtful to her. But at the same time, she also noticed something strange about Kaminari. There was a hollow look inside his eyes. She has never seen him do something like this. When close to him, everyone would feel reassured, but now she feels like she doesn't know him anymore. And she feels guilty to even feel this, but she feels scared. It wasn't how he moves or talks, he still seems kind. But what is freaking her out is the atmosphere around him. Kaminari, what are you feeling right now? She wonders. Mina is the only one who has known Kaminari for such a long time. So only she can notice his slight change. And even then... She is unsure and thinks that she might have just eaten something bad to feel this way. As the battle comes to a conclusion, Kaminari goes to rest in private. That is when Mineta approaches him with an idea about having the 1A class girls in cheerleader uniforms. Kaminari usually wouldn't care to do something like this. But, I should be able to do something like this and easily get away with. I must be able to do something like this too contemplates Kaminari, his dream to perfection is something that is just a borrowed dream. But he also wants to test the way that this will go. He wants to test himself and push himself out of his comfort zone socially. Come on, Kaminari. The girls will listen to you. Have you seen the way that they look at you? Honestly, the way any girl looks at you is infuriating. But come on, please see do this for me. I promise that I will owe you big for this. Pleads Mineta, he knows that Kaminari can get the girls to do it. Every girl in class has something for the guy. Kaminari just gives him a side glance and doesn't give him any confirmation or anything like that. He just walks away with a smile on his face. A couple of minutes later, he finds the group of 1A class girls and calls out to them. Yo, girls. Aizawa Sensei said that the girls can wear a cheerleader outfit and every girl from the other classrooms will be doing the same as the battles will be soon announced. Kaminari POV, really? Asks Momo as I tell her that. I just shrug and answer her by saying. That is what they told me, at least. She nods at this, not asking any more questions, as she knows that I would never lie about something like this. Well, she thinks she knows. She doesn't know that I have lied to her around 50% of the time we have spoken together. Well, when someone has a good reputation, he can do a lot of things and get away with it freely. Anyway, just because he said that you don't have to wear revealing cheerleading outfits if you feel uncomfortable, I tell them that to reassure them. The girls, though, still seem unsure of it. I then just wave at them and smile as I walk away. Anyway, see you later. With that finished, I just go towards where the other students are and as the break is over we go to the arena to draw lots. But we are interrupted by present Mike loudly announcing. Woo! It seems like Class 1A has gone full-on fan service. As he says that I just look at the 1A girl staring at me with death glares, I look around, confused, and when I see that no one else is wearing cheerleader outfits, my face just pales and I point at my netta. He told me that Aizawa said so. I really should have known better... Mineta doesn't even notice me putting all of the blame on him, as he just looks at the girls with a dazed look and a blush on his face. Yep, and he wonders why he isn't popular. 
I have an apologetic look on my face and clasp my hands in a silent apology and mouth out to them a sorry. In the end, we pick the lots and it seems like I will have to fight first, my opponent is the guy with the mind control quirk. Shinsu is his name, and so the first fight comes about. And in DDDDD, the first battle is against the mysterious Hitoshi Shinso and the lightning boy Kaminari Denki Ai. Shinso looks at this annoyed and whispers under his breath. What's up with the difference in introduction between us? Even the mysterious part was like you were asking a question. I smile politely at him and say, Yo, Shinso, right? Let's have a good fight. Begin. Announces present Mike without even counting down. This seems like a habit of his. Shinso just asks me, What was your name again? Even though I know what he plans to do with a smile on my face, I answer him. My name is Kaminari Denki. Immediately I can feel my body go out of my control. It feels like a dream where I can't control my body and I start moving to turn around but immediately. BZZZZT I use electricity in my hand and I don't use my cork on protecting it and actually, I skillfully hit my nerves and with pinpoint precision that has been honed during the over a decade that I have spent training my cork. In the end, an unimaginable amount of pain assaults my hand, as if molten lava has been poured in the inside of my arm. But though the pain lasts for less of a second, it wakes me up, and I get out of Shinso's control and look at him with a smile still on my face. I see that he has a shocked look on his face. In the end, I just told him, Your quirk is truly amazing, and you will be on the top 10 of the hero spectrum, though this quirk is best kept a secret and the fewer people know about it the better it is. So, hope we can work together in the future, having someone like you having my back will make me more comfortable. Fwash! Though he can hear my words, I don't let him comprehend them yet as I appear next to him and run a small electric shock to the back of his neck harmlessly knocking him out. I truly did mean that he is going to become an amazing hero, though he should deal with his inferiority complex of his, it is tying him down. He thinks that his cork isn't good for a hero job, he must get that thought off his head. I can see that he wants to be a pro hero, but he is still limiting himself needlessly. Anyway, I shouldn't be the one talking about snubbing others' feelings of inferiority when I have my own. Shit, he continued to cast a shadow over me even after his death. When I was in my first world and it followed me all the way here, damn. I really need to get rid of these thoughts, but I am afraid that if I start getting rid of them, I will stop wanting to become the best. I can't deny that my first life was very successful because of these thoughts. I am just an imitation of him. I will never be him. I am charismatic but not as good as him. I am smart but nowhere near as him. I am manipulative but not as good as him. Honestly, I can't find a single thing in which I triumph over him. The shadow he cast was way too big. I sometimes wonder, did I ruin the life of my new family by acting like him? I wonder, if those close to me grieved when I died? After having those thoughts, I went back to the class 1A booth, and Ijiro congratulates me. That was amazing Kaminari. As expected of you, you finished it super fast. I smirk. It wasn't as easy as it looked, when he hears me say that he is confused, but in the end, I won't elaborate on it, so he knows not to ask. But Deku on the other hand still writes something in his little notebook, you know, if a villain got their hands on that, it would be beyond dangerous. The second match is Tape Guy Siro vs Todoroki. The latter seemed aggravated at the start of the fight, so I wasn't at all surprised when he uses way too much power and encases Siro in ice, for which he apologizes later on. The third fight is Midoriya against Mei, the girl from the support department who previously was in his team. Deku almost loses because he was stupid enough to wear some equipment she gave him from before the match. He has to use one for all twice, destroying two of his fingers, just so he can defeat her by knocking her out of the ring with a wind blast. The fourth fight is Ibra Shiyazaki, Quirk, can manipulate her vine-like hair, against Illida. Sadly her quirk is used as field control and Illida was defeated eventually. The fight lasted around 20 minutes and in the end, Illida's engine overheated and he started to slow down as he failed to defeat her by using his finishing final attack. She then just grabbed him with her vine-like hair and threw him out of the ring. The next two matches go in a flash in comparison, as Mina is against Yuga, quirk, belly button laser, 
On the other hand, in the fight of Momo versus Fumikage, though unlike canon, this fight goes on differently as Momo has spent a lot of time with me and her thinking process has majorly changed. She uses her quirk to create a flash grenade. After that, Fumikage was easily defeated. The battle between Ochako against Bakugu happens and Bakugu wins the fight. Next, it is me against Todoroki. I am currently in the bathrooms washing my face as they fix the ring due to the destruction caused by Bakugu and Ochako's battle. When the door opens, I just give a side glance to the man who entered. It is Endeavor, the man who would be, to jail if his crimes were reported. His wife didn't just decide to burn off the side of the face of her own son, who resembled him. The marriage was most likely arranged so she didn't have a choice. And yeah, and how did she have so many children with him if she hated him that much? Did he force himself on her? Did he grape her? Now even if he didn't do that, the only thing needed is for the question to be brought up and that's it. His hero career is bye-bye, he wouldn't be worrying about beating All Might anymore. He should instead be more worried about not dropping the soap in prison. With some people in there who he himself put in there. But that doesn't matter as I hear him stand next to me and say, I want you to not go easy on Shoto. I don't like the way he says it like he is ordering me. I look at him in the eyes for a couple of seconds and walk away. I don't need you to tell me what to do. Number two. I just close the door as I walk away. I can hear him wreathe in anger when I tell him that. But it doesn't matter, he is number two and will always be so, even if All Might retires. Everyone will forever remember him as number two, and I think he realizes that. But there is nothing he can do about it. When I arrive at the new fixed stage and look at Todoroki, who is in front of me, we both have calm looks on our faces. I don't say anything, and neither does he. I know that talking to him now would be useless, whether he uses the fire half of his quirk, that doesn't matter at all to me. Begin! Announces present Mike, and immediately Todoroki sends a huge wave of ice towards me. He knows better than to go too easy on me, but he isn't using his fireside, so he definitely won't win well even if he uses it. The chances of him winning against me are still minuscule. I still have my hands in my pockets as the ice gets close to me. Bzzzzzzt boom. Immediately, the ice is destroyed, and as soon as it gets within a range of 5 meters close to me, it will be destroyed. An automatic defense system has been set around me. As soon as something enters my 5 meter dome, it will be hit by lightning. It hits too fast, and it works more on an instinctual level than a controllable, it is the perfect defense for me. Snap I take one of my hands out of my pocket and snap my fingers at Todoroki. Bzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
I frown at this, it seems like I couldn't make him use his fire part of the quirk. But I still defeated him, even while limiting myself. I am someone who fights with Kirishima in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Todoroki might have a good quirk. But his close-quarter combat abilities have much left to be desired. Meaning that he is pretty much done once someone gets close to him, now if he had fire, it would be a whole different deal. I turn around as I hear the crowd cheer for me, but suddenly they stop, and I can feel the heat behind me. I turn around and look at Todoroki. A tornado of fire surrounds him as his hair flies upward. I smile at this. Ready for round two? He smiles back at me with a thankful look in his eyes. Yes, yes, I am. Fwoosh. A giant beam of fire comes towards me, and I smile as electricity dances around me, and my hair floats upwards with static electricity. I use my speed to move straight through the fire. The fire can't burn me as I move too fast for it to even touch me. I appear close to him, but I can feel a cold feeling appear around and to me, as the ice comes towards me, protecting Todoroki. I have to jump back to not be frozen. My smile widens even more as my hair seems to itself fuse with the electricity I am discharging. And it seems like my hair lengthened. Bzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
both girls who seem to have a crush on me, or more correctly, they have a crush on the person that they think I am. Their perception of me and the real me are completely different. Momo wins the fight by using her creative ability to create a stun gun. Honestly, Momo has started using her ability very smartly, also her knowledge has risen, and she doesn't just look for such simple things to create, and she solves bigger problems by separating them into smaller ones. Her whole thinking process changed, and it made her more effective in using her quirk. The next fight was Kirishima versus Bakugo. Hmm. I wonder how this one will go. General POV. Kirishima and Bakugo looked at each other from the opposite sides of the field. He can resist my explosions, but he should get tired after trying to keep up that hardening all over his body for quite some time. Contemplate Bakugo, though he has a scowl on his face, his mind is working fully calm and logically. He is used to having his body full of anger and still thinks calmly. Plus, this anger helps him sweat more, which strengthens his quirk even more. Kirishima on the other hand had a smile on his face, though he and Bakugo were friends, he would never go easy on him. And he actually can't go easy because he can't keep this hardening for too long anymore. He has been using it during the exam a lot. I must wait for the perfect moment and take Bakugo off guard. Begin. Announces present Mike. Immediately Kirishima rushed Bakugo and the latter charges an explosion in his palm. Boom. It hits Kirishima in his abdomen. But he doesn't even flinch at all and keeps attacking Bakugo. A small scratch appears on Bakugo's cheek as the edge of Kirishima's nails touch him. Immediately Bakugo goes on the defensive. Seems like Bakugo has gone on the defensive in his fight. Announces present Mike. His voice full of excitement. And that is when Bakugo takes the initiative. Boom! And strikes Kirishima in the abdomen again. This time Kirishima winces as his defense got weaker. Bakugo sees this and smiles slightly. Die! Yells Bakugo as he charges up a huge explosion and due to the movement by dodging Kirishima's attacks, he had enough sweat gathered up. Boom! The explosion engulfs Kirishima and Bakugo assumes that his victory is in his pocket, but suddenly out of nowhere Kirishima, which now looks like a monstrous figure charges at Bakugo. Red Riot Unbreakable as he gets close to a surprised Bakugo who is about to ignite his hands in an explosion to blast him away from Kirishima's range. But he can't do so as the latter grabs onto his wrist and punches forward. Red Gancharito Bomb. The punch hits Bakugo in the stomach and it feels as if he was hit by a truck and immediately passes out. The winner in Aijiro Kirishima. Present Mike announces and the crowd roars in excitement as at the end, Kirishima looks scary but at the same time cool to everyone. His training with Kaminari before he came to school has allowed him to defeat Bakugo. And Tetsu Tetsu cheers for Kirishima in victory too. Next comes Ibera versus Midoriya, and the latter can win with only having to break one finger, which creates a shockwave big enough to knock Ibera out of the ring, even though she used her vine-like hair as a way to try and defend herself. Then the fight against Momo versus Kirishima comes. Momo wins that by creating a cannon and pointing it at Kirishima. The latter immediately gives up, he is already out of stamina to fight against someone like Momo, who just has to eat sweets and junk food to charge up her quirk. After that whole ordeal, the next fight is Midoriya Izuku versus Denki Kaminari. Midoriya POV. I can't stop my shaking even while walking to the ring. I can see the relaxed posture of Kaminari. He seems uninterested in anything around him, he doesn't even see me as a threat, and I can't exactly blame him about it. His speed dwarfs mine, also so does his intelligence. His power, technique, endurance, stamina, confidence, and everything that I can think of. He does it better than me. I have wondered countless times about this and I have concluded that if All Might knew of someone like Kaminari, then he would have given him one for all. I can already feel the burden of not being able to live up to the potential of one for all. I am supposed to be the next symbol of peace, but I am unsure if I can do it. On the other hand, Kaminari is 100% sure of his success, and he walks confidently with a smile on his face all of the time. As we are in the ring, he just waves at the crowd with seemingly no anxiety. Then he looks at me and smiles. Do your best, Midoriya. Why you too, Kaminari-san? As I say that to him, he just nods. Begin. Announces present Mike, for a split second, startling me as it brings me out of my thoughts. BZZZT, a current running through my body is the last thing I felt as everything went dark. General POV. 
Kaminari just looks at Deku as he falls on the ground unconscious. If one for all wasn't so creepy, he would have tried to get it. But he knows better than having another intelligent being inside of himself. His brother taught him better, they used to joke about anime things like this back in the day. Still, even he can see that Deku truly is one of the, if not the worst users of one for all, Mirio would have truly been the best candidate, and he would have trumped over Midoriya easily. In the end, Kaminari just raises his hand in victory, all might, skeleton form, looks at this scene with a nervous look on his face, and he uses his hands to cover his face. After that fight, in the end, Momo gave up her match against Kaminari, saying that at the moment she isn't even an opponent to him, Midoriya and Kirishima were supposed to compete for third place, but since Deku was unconscious, Kirishima gets third place automatically. In the end, the top three were 1 ST place, Kaminari Denki second place, Yayorozu Momo third place, Aijiro Kirishima the crowd roars in cheers while Kaminari stands on the number one podium. Momo seems a little embarrassed, Kirishima seems a little nervous too. He thinks that he only got here due to luck because if he fought Todoroki he would have lost. Which is true. In the end, Kaminari seems in his natural element as he waves at the crowd with a mesmerizing smile on his face. When Momo sees Kaminari like this, she blushes slightly, but she just looks away. Momo couldn't help but bashfully think. He is so cool when he acts like that. Kaminari has a strange charisma to him that draws people in. Like a magnet, his friendly and willing to help attitude puts him in everyone's good books. Midnight comes to the stage at this time and says out loud, Ladies and gentlemen, the medals this time will be given by that man. Ha 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 ha. Everyone immediately recognizes that as All Might's laugh. The man who will announce the medals is Dash. I am here. All Might. Midnight and All Might interrupt each other while they speak. Midnight looks at All Might with an apologetic look on her face. She says, Oh, sorry about talking over you. All Might doesn't say anything as he just looks at her with a smile on his face. They had revised this three times before the festival, and she still messed it up. In the end, he just takes a bronze medal and gives it to Kirishima. You did well, young Kirishima. You showed everyone that even with a quirk that might not seem amazing. You were very cool out there. As All Might says that, he gives Kirishima a thumbs up and his teeth glint. Next, he goes to Momo and gives her the silver medal while saying, You young Momo are a student who has shown excellence in every aspect. I do not doubt that one day you will make a remarkable hero. Finally, he has the gold medal on his hands with the number one on it. All Might's smile widens a little as he looks at Kaminari. Kaminari smiles back at All Might and says, All Might, don't worry. I will be the next symbol of peace. Kaminari doesn't say anything like he will surpass All Might, since that would only make him sound arrogant to some of the hardcore All Might fans. He knows that there are a lot of them of different ages and genders, but as Kaminari says that he will be the next symbol of peace, the crowd hears it too due to the microphone All Might was wearing. Immediately, everything goes quiet. Even Midoriya has a cringing look as he hears Kaminari say that. Everyone is curious about what he will be saying next. Kaminari accidentally put All Might on the spot. So in the end All Might says, I see. I will be waiting for you, young Kaminari. W-O-H-H-H-H-H the crowd immediately cheers loudly by saying that All Might pretty much just told everyone that he will wait for Kaminari to take his place. In a way, this makes Kaminari All Might's successor. As he hears this, tears flow out of Midoriya's eyes. Bakugo, who had an angry look on his face, is a little surprised at why Deku is crying. On the other hand, the rest of the first-year UA students look at this with shocked looks. To them, this seems as if they are witnessing a historic moment itself. Afterward, All Might gives a speech to everyone, saying that everyone who participated in the sports festival had a chance to stand on the podium and that the future generation of heroes looks bright. All Might yells out, great work, to everyone, congratulating them for their efforts. With that, UA's sports festival comes to an end. After that, the students were told that there would be a two-day break. Kaminari just walks back to his house together with Mina and Kirishima. As he enters his home, he sees that it is empty like always. No one to greet him here, no one to talk to him. Though he doesn't mind the loneliness, 
he does wish that he had someone waiting for him. I kinda wish my second life parents were alive. That would make things easier. This place is lonely as hell. He goes to the fridge and drinks his protein shakes and eats his daily intake of calories and vegetables. He has a super healthy lifestyle, as he wants his body to always be able to keep up with his quirk. He sits down in the completely dark living room. No light is on, he doesn't care to turn it on. I wonder how strong I am now compared to all for one. Contemplates Kaminari, he knows that even though he is fast and strong. He knows that all for one with his combination of quirks is monstrous. I wonder, what should I do? His mind instinctively immediately goes towards his sibling every time he is unsure of something. Crap. I need to stop this thought process. Again a whisper echoes in the back of his head with the voice of a familiar someone. Kaminari's eyes widen at this. His he can feel his heart almost beating out of his chest as it beats like an engine ringing in his ears. Damn it. I am going crazy. I am hearing shit. Cold sweat is excreted from his body. He can feel adrenaline run through his veins. His body is unnaturally going into a fight or flight mode. But Kaminari knows that this is needless as he can already sense that no one is around him and even if someone teleported or something like that he would know. What is going on with me lately? Did I get hit by some illusion quirk? Why am I so unusually jumpy? Well, I have never been in such a dangerous situation in my past life. Honestly, a straight-out fight would be better. The unknown of when they will attack me makes me nervous. They could attack me right now. They could stop me with an illusion quirk for a split second and all for one just comes out and casually steals my quirk. Contemplates Kaminari, as he has to take deep breaths to calm down. He has never had something like this happen. His body is instinctively reacting to his uncertainty. I never predicted that I would be such a mess in the face of adversity. Damn it. I am such a coward. I don't have that hunger for power. I want power, that is true, but I don't have that psychotic hunger for it, one which would sacrifice a child for it. I could never look an innocent child in the eye and kill them for power. Kaminari takes a deep breath and can't help but contemplate if he is developing some mental problems due to his stress. I should relax during these two days. I haven't rested for many years. I must calm down and relax a little as it has started becoming detrimental to me. Don't worry little brother, you have me here. Forever protecting you, thinks Kaminari, but his thoughts seem foreign. His mind lies to itself, making it seem like his own brother speaks on his mind. Shit, I am actually going crazy here. He looks around the house, every shadow having the chance of it being Kurojiri. His rational mind leads on a route of itself and suddenly, he smirks, his back straightens, his frightened posture changes into a confident one. He seemed completely fearless. Hmm. How silly to be afraid of the dark. It's just a lack of photons. It's just so silly, he says smiling, as if he is a whole different person. Two days pass and Kaminari spends it relaxing and sleeping. He played video games and watched TV runs of different shows. I should see if One Piece is finished in this world. Though his problem seems to have become bigger. The whispers inside his head have become louder and seem to talk clearer here. Kaminari tried talking to them out of curiosity and questions. Really? One Piece? I never saw the end of it. Kaminari can't help but smirk a little. Are you like the devil in the shoulder who entices me to be lazy or something? The voice whispers again in a joking voice. You need to say no homo if you say that. Kaminari chuckles a little at that. I should give you a name then. Since I have a mental problem, I should and make it useful to me. Even the image of you created inside my head is a dong, says Kaminari as he puts on his UA uniform. Kaminari takes a remote route to UA as he puts on his face mask. Social distancing is a must. In case COVID comes to this world, thinks Kaminari jokingly. Six feet away or about average datable male height. Also, you should try growing your hair like a hentai protagonist. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much and it keeps me going. Plus, it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.